what is this one? Number 13. Sort of amazing that we've done 13 of these already. Where did that time go? And Anne's got some pretty seriously jazzy green hair you have going there. She just took her video off, but pretty amazing. Wow, Ray, last week, 30 by 60 metal to a regional air carrier. I love it. Art love is that. still selling. Do you uh, check your Slack? Yep, I'll check it. Um, looks like we are now live. Guys, welcome to office hours, number 13. Uh, what do we title this one? Do we have a title on this one? The virus changed how art is sold. That's, uh, that's, our, that's our incredibly big buzzword um, statement. But thanks everybody for joining. Uh, we've really been enjoying these. We hope we're getting better at them. Uh, I have the unenviable task of uh, being the wrangler and trying to keep everybody's questions somewhat focused, uh, which you know the downside is I sometimes have to mute you. I'm sorry, uh, but we wanna, we wanna try and keep everyone's questions um, you know, an equal amount of time and a good amount of time to be able to answer each. So many of you are raising your hands already. That's fantastic. Um, what do we have in terms of announcements, Nick? Do we have any? Uh, no, and also just going to mention that we're trying to limit it to like five minutes roughly, right, per person? Yeah. Um, roughly. So, so if you have a question, have your question ready for us. Um, if you've raised your hand, that'll help it, help it kind of just move along for everybody. Um, yeah, announcements. I, I just got called the cat herder, which is totally appropriate. It is absolutely hurting cats. And I might even mute myself, okay? I've been known to mute myself if I get out of line. So it's, I, <laughs> I, I, I like to think I apply it all equally. Yeah, so announcements, yeah, ahead, um, uh, mentioned this quite a few times, but for anybody who didn't already know, the print sale exclusive to Art Storefronts members, whether you're connected to Bay Photo or Graphic Dimensions is on. Uh, it's basically been on for the last uh, two and a half weeks, but we, um, we got it extended all the way through April, right? So the main reason for this though, is because we believe everybody should be running a sale right now. That is what is really working. Um, that's what the workshop was on Friday, was just basically a step-by-step -step walkthrough um, where the marketing team was showing exactly how to get that done. Um, it's in the art marketing calendar for all of you guys anyway. And uh, let's go ahead and have it in the show notes here today. So if anybody missed it and they're just gonna hop on that, they can just go back and watch that session. But, but overall, the thing that um, the uh, the thing that we noticed was the people that were running sales right now, and particularly if you were you know if you were using language specific to this pandemic situation, and we talked about that a lot last week, which is home decor sales are exploding, right? And it's important for you guys to know that um, it's you know, and art happens to be a part of the home decor segment. And, uh, you know, there's various um, companies and news articles that were talking about all of this and we've documented it all. And I did a presentation on it last Tuesday. But in addition, at Art Storefronts, um, our sales from artist websites have actually exploded. Um, Patrick and I were, were reviewing those numbers. We do a metrics meeting every Monday with the team. And... Uh, one of the things that we look at is the overall sales on the platform from art, individual artist websites. And we look at it like on a year over year basis, we, we parse it different ways just to understand how well everybody is doing. Because obviously, um, if you guys are winning, that's the only way that we can win at the end of the day. So we got to help you guys create more wins. So we track that metric. And um, the, the number what uh, grew our, our, our year over year growth for last week was 150%. And we almost all just fell out of our chairs because it was, the number was so high, you know? Um, and so we just continue to see the data that everybody's at home, you know, uh, every single person that used to work in an office, every executive, every millionaire, every billionaire, everyone is at home in their new home office um, and is paying more attention to their surroundings and their walls than ever. And as a result, you know, there is a market for art. Art happens to be one of these products that's actually winning or surviving in this pandemic. It's not like the normal recession of like 2008. It's a whole different ballgame. 
And so, you know, we, uh, that's why we were talking about last week, we want to make sure everybody's running a sale and to use the printing discounts as a way to, you know, um, to kind of pay that forward to your own consumer. Or increase your margins, depending on how you want to play it. Exactly. Uh, could go either way. All right. Well, if that covers up announcements, um, I've seen Meg is on already. We were going to start with Meg. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute Meg and get her on here. Meg, can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? Hey, Meg. I can hear you. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, let me, let me, let me give a quick introduction and, and Meg, you can fill in the blanks too, right? <laughs> Meg Knappenberger has been an artist for like, I think nine years or so, right? Nine or 10 years, roughly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. She's been on the platform of art storefronts for a couple of years. Um, Meg has done extremely well. She sells hundreds of thousands of dollars from her art storefronts website. Um, she's really good at marketing. Um, and that's one of the things that we're going to talk about today. And uh, she's definitely someone that you should follow on Instagram or Facebook. I think Instagram's probably the best. Um, she, and, and I say that because she is a great mentor. Like if you, if you understand what she's doing and that's why she's here today, she's, she's here to help, you know, coach some, some of you guys and get some feedback from her. That's not just like business executive <laughs> type of uh, feedback and, and coaching, which I think is, is helpful. Um, but yeah, if you follow her on Instagram, you'll see, you know, she's marketing every day pretty much. Um, and she's, she's real, she, what Meg has done really well, and I think Patrick kind of pinpoints this is, you know, Meg, you, you, you really have done like the personal brand thing really well. Right. Um, and what that Thanks. means is like, you're, you're selling a bunch of different types of content, you know, like you've got your, your Kansas stuff, your Kansas university stuff, but you also have like your animals, like your bison and, you know, um, some other types of, of content, but the brand is you. You know what I mean? And you're really good at doing that. And you've always been like, you know, you jumped right into it and you, you know, you're, you're confident with it and you're, you're romancing. Well, you're telling great stories behind your pieces and the inspiration. And, and I think that that, you know, it, it works really well. And the, and the truth of the matter is right. Like if you want to be successful at anything in any business, you got to put in the work, right? Like you, you, it's fish aren't going to just jump into your boat. Right. Um, and I think the other thing too is Meg, you, you built this business out of your house, right? And I, I know you have a studio now. Do you still have that studio? No, I actually moved out of that studio when uh, a retail opportunity popped up. So I kind of like moved the rent cost Got over. It. So I'm, I'm working out of our basement right now. And I'm actually kind of grateful for that right now in the, you know, to not have the over studio. So, oh yeah. yeah. Anyways, that was my that was my introduction from my side. But Meg, if there's anything else you want to add there to fill in the gaps, uh, yeah, I'm, you pretty much covered it. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. So what happened? So Meg, <laughs> Meg, uh, Meg, you know, she was her and I were chatting back and forth like over the end of last week and this weekend, and she was mentioning that she was running the sale um, and. And it was working extremely well for her. Um, and I think you did a couple of things that might've been a little unique or different this time. Um, and I, I noticed it myself because I'm, I'm on your email list and I follow you on Instagram. So I'm able to see, you know, like, and you were, you were hitting different pieces, you know, like along with this sale, which I thought was very, very smart. Thank you. Yeah, that was a, a different thing this time. And uh, in all honesty, it was a way for me to be excited about doing it every day because I probably like many of you have at home with both of my kids during the day right now, which is a change of schedule for sure. So I'm used to working full time. And right now I'm having to find, uh, you know, like an hour in the morning and then after they go to bed or in the middle of the night or whenever to, um, to write. And so writing about what inspired me and like, making the email and the story kind of like an extension of my work itself uh, made me like want to do it at six in the morning or 10 at night. So that was really a selfish, it was totally selfish to do it that way. And then I, as I sent emails out last week, detailing different pieces, I got so many responses back from people who were saying, 
we love this, more stories, more stories. And I had, I had been a little afraid of doing a long form. So it was kind of like, um, kind of like taking the idea of a blog post with lots of, you know, lots of pictures, word, picture, word, and people read through the whole thing. I was really surprised at the, um, how many people finished it. <laughs> so, uh, so that was a, a nice little like happy accident uh, this time. Is your sale still going on right now or did you end it yet? Is well, I, I mean, luckily right now with like everything going on, I feel like there's a lot of like, we can just kind of like wing it and I'm, I have been kind of winging it. So I ended the sale on uh, Sunday night or Friday night at midnight, but I actually decided to keep it going. Only I'm going to offer a code to keep it going and send it out personally to pe anyone who's bought my work in the past. So now I'm just kind of figuring out how to do that. Maybe sending like uh, personal emails to each individual person instead of something from my list. And I'm, you guys have been talking a lot about hand-to-hand -hand combat and it totally works. And that's just a way to, you know, anyone who didn't see those emails um, just to try and like shake some more stuff out of the tree. So. Yeah. And, and you, like, I, I, we talked about this on Instagram once, Meg, you and I, and the hand-to-hand -hand combat, right? Let's talk mm -hmm. about that for a second, what that means. Yeah. Um, you know, for everybody on here that has heard Patrick and I talk about how, you know, you should not be thinking like, how do I automate this business? How do I automate unsold carts? How do I automate like, you know, a second like order from somebody who bought a print for me in the past? Instead, you should be thinking about, you know, sending a one-off email from you personally to connect with that person. Um, because that's what they that's what everybody is really seeking. And that's actually your advantage, your arbitrage as an artist. And it's what makes you different than art.com and fine art America and these, these like Costco like websites where the experience is so cold. It's literally the exact opposite of warm, right? It's like, it's as cold as you get. You don't know anything about the artist. You're just looking at this big list. It's a, it's a, it's a race to the bottom in terms of price, right? Um, and on the other hand, you know, if you do the hand to hand combat, you're building relationships, you'll, you're, you're deepening like the connection with your, with your customers and your collectors and they love it. They absolutely love it because they know you and you're kind of a star. You have star power as the artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so true for, for any artist. Uh, it's so true. <laughs> you know, I, I, we talked about this on Instagram before that artists are kind of like unicorns or, you know, just some people who do something interesting that the people who are buying your work are uh, fascinated by the process. So anything we can do to let them in on that, um, I've seen it over and over again, people are, people like that. And uh, for the hand-to-hand -hand combat thing, you know, original sales wise, whenever I sell original paintings, I, I never sell them without uh, a personal conversation first. So people, when they're spending $8,000, $10,000, $15,000, they want to have a conversation. They want to get me on the phone. They want to come see the piece. So there's always some romance there. And it doesn't always happen with the like $40 prints, but um, especially as part of this sale, I was getting a lot of email questions and was really more than ever trying to personally engage people with emails, phone calls. Um, I don't always give out my phone number for texting to everybody. I typically, that's just a collector's only thing, but I've been doing that a little more too, just, and it's kind of a, like, I say to people, you know, I don't, I don't give my phone number out that much, but feel free to text me anytime if you have questions. And it's just those little personal touch points that allow that access, um, you know, that, People want to, you know, want to know like, how do I recommend uh, ordering this piece? Okay, this sunflower is really cool. I recommend ordering it on paper, and here's why. And this piece looks really cool on metal, and here's why. So I started incorporating that into the emails last week too, and I was seeing those specific styles being ordered, and that that is a new thing too that I noticed from this. Like, people want to know what I think, how how I think they should order it, because there's a lot of options. So it's a great way to move some of those higher margin things too, like metal and um, acrylic and canvas. If you've you know priced them appropriately, even under a sale, you can, uh, yeah.
<laughs> so on this on this last sale, I'd be curious, how many pieces did you sell in total? And out of that total, how many did you do the hand-to-hand -hand combat? Uh, I don't know the total number of uh, pieces sold, but I would say uh, almost almost all of them, probably 80%, 90% of them Phenomenal. were had hand-to-hand. -hand. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a high touch sale. It's a high touch sale. And, you know, we've been ranting about this quite a bit recently. It's like, what is the best way to sell art? It's in person. It's always been in person. It will never not be in person. So what your job, all of our jobs is to take the transaction online and make it as close as possible to the hand to hand in person sale. And I, I you know, I even thought I was ranting on an Instagram live, you know, we're all on these zoom calls. Everyone understands zoom calls. A zoom account is not that expensive. Like it might make sense to get a Zoom account and start putting in your emails. Want to chat about a piece? Want to understand media options? I'm available for Zoom chats. Just respond to my email and shut up and see what I'm happens. I'm planning to do that as part of the sale. As I'm extending the sale, mm -hmm. I'm going to set up. Um, if you get, uh, there's a program called Calendly. Yep. It's like C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y. It's free and you can link it with Zoom right now for free. Um, during all of this stuff. And so people will be able to go in and schedule a time for like a 15 minute consultation. So thank you for the idea. I'm gonna try that as part of this um, like extension of the sale and see if people are booking time to just get a consult or even just, you know, talk about yeah, and some you, things. And you so. can do it for free too. Like FaceTime, yeah. FaceTime, yeah. awesome video totally. calling. Messenger, awesome video calling. Like there are, there are a ton of really, really good ways to do it. And to your point, like, no one understands the media types. They don't know what to order. They don't know what size is on the wall. They probably don't even know you have, you know, the augmented reality feature on your website. Like you got to teach them. We don't know. People just don't know. Turn it into an on or an offline sale to the best of your ability. I think it's just such sound advice. Meg, you also could very easily just extend that sale through the rest of this week and just let her rip again and, yeah. say, and then offer the Zoom call as like, you know, Hey, for anyone that didn't get a chance that might have any questions, I've got this as well to help you figure out what to do. And you might, you might get similar results for another week. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. As of last night, it's like, I think I'm going to keep this rolling and just see, you know, see what we else we can do with it. So I think uh, Patrick said something uh, probably a month ago or a while ago that really resonated with me. That was basically like, people aren't people don't see when you post something or send an email one time. So saying something over and over and over again until you are so sick of saying it, maybe somebody sees it once. So that was a real learning for me because we spent all this time crafting these beautiful emails or like one really great Instagram post. And then it's like, okay, well that's done. Put it in the bank. And like, you know, maybe 2% of people that follow you see it, maybe, you know, my best emails get 20%, 25% open rate, but you know, there's, that's still 75% of the people that didn't see it. So, uh, you know, the content can be spend a little time and then reuse it over and over and over and over and over again. <laughs> and that's, so, one, that's one of the mantras that like, you have to just constantly repeat because yeah. it is a creator's trap. Like as creators, you think yeah. like, you, you get stuck, even worse is like, all this time and energy and effort in creating this thing, which is amazing. And then you email it out once and you put it on Facebook once and nobody sees it. And you're like, okay, I'm done. I got to move on to the next thing. And it's like, no, no. <laughs> you know how much ROI you just lost? Think of it as a recipe, right? You make the meal one time, but guess what? You can make that meal 10,000 more times. And it's like, it's not just a, a reminder for you. It's like a reminder for us too. Nobody saw it. Nobody saw it. And even if they did see it, they didn't read it. And even if they did read it, they didn't read the whole thing. Even if they did see it and read it, they didn't read the whole thing. They didn't watch the video. Whatever it is, like you can get back to the well again and again and again and again. And the distractions are just so heavy and so high right now. So I think, God, what an important lesson that one is just across the board. Yeah. Do not wow. think, do not fool yourself. Do not fall into the trap that anyone saw your email or your post uh, or, or clicked on it or read the whole thing because they didn't. You can do it again and again and again and again. And don't stop until someone says enough already. Then maybe you start to know. And don't even stop <laughs> until like five people say enough already. You're going to do something else. Like that's, that's yeah. almost the rule of thumb in it all. Yeah. I sent an email on, uh, so the sale ended on Friday and I sent an, an email on Friday morning at like 11 that said sale ends at midnight, blah, 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 blah. And then I sent another email at seven o'clock that night 
And at that seven o'clock email on the last day was when I turned out a bunch of sales and got a text from a collector saying, I want to buy out the rest of this collection stuff. So it was mm, like at the that. 11th hour of the sale, things really started cooking. We so, love those. I'd, I'd love yeah. to have you dive in a little bit on the tactical, specifically your Instagram story game. For those that are that are watching that don't know and want to see an artist that is dominating Instagram stories like it's going out of style, Meg is the perfect example of that. Uh, I would I would run as a corollary like, you know, and I'll, I'll switch it. Well, I can't. It's too hard to share your screen. But Meg only has 4,700 followers on Instagram. Not a lot of followers in the grand scheme of things. If you're just getting started, that sounds like a lot. But we've got people with 60, 70, 80, 90,000 Instagram followers that is not getting the same sales volume that Meg is. Why? Because she's fully taking advantage of it. And so when you want to understand how to up your Instagram story game, number one, uh, I would check Meg out. I would give her a hat tip, not just to filling it all the time, but you know, she understands fundamentally that, that selling art is a solo entrepreneur type of a deal and that you are the brand. You are the brand. You can't just post images. You can't hide behind your camera. Trust me, I hate being on video, uh, uh, receiving hairline. Like, you can't. You can't do it. You have to show your art. You have to show your personality. She's interacting with her kids. She's doing nonsense in the backyard. She's jumping in puddles. Whatever it is, she does a very good job of of you know showing herself and getting to know her and and feeling a bond with her and these various different things and projects. And then not only that, the the Instagram page is completely optimized. Look at it. You got posts. You've got story highlights, the links on point. She's starting to do IGTV things. And relative to her follower count, I would say she's significantly punching above her weight. And the reason we wanted to bring her on and sort of talk about some of these things is I think there's a playbook here that a lot of people could run with. So that's what I would say. But yeah, get into, get into the tactical a little bit on the stories. Well, uh, the thing I like about stories is that they are uh, like quick and imperfect and that's the expectation and I think that's what people like about them and uh from what I hear and read uh there are a lot of people on Instagram who are just watching stories now and not scrolling their feed anymore they kind of get stuck in that yep. and there's kind of this growing movement towards like away from or not towards but like away from the really perfectly si styled stuff on Instagram and into the more of like gritty um you know imperfect stuff so um I think that's part of why stories is really uh, growing. And I like it because I can do it quickly. Like pick, you know, pull up your phone, tap a picture of whatever you're doing, add a funny little gift to it. Um, you know, pick a, you know, pick a horse as far as, um, like the styling of, you know, I always do like the type on there in one specific way. So people kind of know if they're scrolling through and watching that there's kind of like a visual language to the way I do it. So, um, but it's, you know, I always, talk about what I'm posting about or what's going on in stories. And I try to have a little fun with it. That's kind of like where I'm more funny. I often take stories of myself talking, which is always awkward. And I try to just do it on the first take every time. So I don't like sit there and, and tape it and, and do it and do it and do it. I try to just do it the first time, let there be mess ups. It's like a really great exercise. And just like, it's only live for 24 hours. Not that many people are going to see it. Just like go with it, do it, try something do a funny poll, do, you know, take a picture of what you're doing, what you're having for breakfast. Um, you know, like Patrick said, letting people get to see, um, like, especially right now I'm, I'm home with my kids. So a lot of my stories are like the fort we built in our basement yesterday and, uh, you know, like the creative things we're doing as a family. So, um, you know, it's okay to, to showcase some of that personal stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And Nick, if you're if you're keen to it, it might be fun to open it up for questions. If anyone's got a question for Meg, now everyone's already raised their hands. Yeah, I see in the I see in the comments, Len Cicio had a um, had a question. Right, um, let me find Len on the grid. This is this is actually sort of challenging. If anybody else has a question for Meg, we could you know maybe drop a comment since you guys already have your hands raised. Len, go ahead. what's your question? Okay. Hi, hi, Meg. Hey. Uh, hi. I had a question for you. I just started doing the um, My Story Live, and I noticed that, uh, I know I mentioned this to Taylor too, that the postings I had like sometimes 75, 100 people viewing. I just started doing the live ones the past three days, and the viewings are so low. They're like 7, 13. I was like, what the hell's going on? I asked some of my friends from ASF who saw it, and they said, it looked really well. 
but I couldn't figure out why were there such a huge difference. Did you find that happening or did you find mm -hmm. one more viewers than the other? Yeah, during doing the live, uh, if you're talking about doing Instagram live, like going, going live on your stories, um, if you're live, the number of viewers are just the people who are on Instagram who follow you or who have found your live story just That's at that right. moment. So it may not be that many people, but you can save it into, you can save it afterwards for 24 hours. So more people as they, you know, take their minute on Instagram throughout the day, will be able to see it. So the live count may not be that big, but it's kind of like pre-recording something for later. So um, I, you know, some of the ones I've done have only had like five people and that's fine. You know, they're all, it's all a practice too. So even if there's one person or no one, just do it and try it and learn something and then you know, do it differently the next time. Yep. And Len, I've got a podcast um, that's, it's done already. It's edited. We just need to get it live. So we could even, Taylor, send it to Len before it even goes out. But I've got specific tactics in there um, to make sure that you don't play to an empty room. Um, and Debbie, I saw you have a question for Meg too. In the meantime, uh, mm -hmm. Rick has a question for you, Meg, and says, I'd be curious, Meg, of your ratio of sales um, of originals versus prints. Hmm um dollar amount or uh you know these are all the financial numbers but um i'd have to look i think just ratio you know, so like one original. yeah it's, in guess. terms of volume it's way 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 more prints than originals and that's um number one because my inventory of originals is a little bit low um and uh number two just like a pricing thing and a you know the game for that it's it's a little longer game for me selling originals than than prints so um, and you and i think it's important to say that you sell you sell originals you sell limited editions plenty of them mm -hmm. and you also sell mm -hmm. open editions you sell all three yeah yeah okay yeah, Debbie, you're next a, yep you yeah, have the um different tiers of pricing so sometimes people come in at that first level um, of buying a $40 print and then they graduate up and then they graduate up. So, and I do commissions too. And so those, you know, there's really kind of like four tiers of pricing. Um, yeah, let's see here. My website is M E G H. Oh, we've got it. Yeah, everybody in the chat, you can, you can scroll. Oh, okay. Up. We've got it on there. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and it's okay. in there. Okay. Debbie, go ahead. What's your question for Meg? Oh, my question. Um, well, one, Meg, do you leave, I have two, real quick. On your website, do you leave your originals, do you write sold? Like I have my mm -hmm. prints and originals next to each other. Do you leave the word sold there? I do, yeah, I haven't taken anything down that's sold. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it, it adds some of that excitement and um, urgency when people are shopping and they see that other things have sold on your, on your site. Great, and my other quick question is about Facebook. I have a personal and a business. So like this, I'm on personal, but mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure which I should use. Like I have way more friends, family, and people who know me on my personal, but I definitely have the business. And when I post something like on Instagram, it goes to the business, mm -hmm. not on my personal. So those people aren't seeing it. How do you play that out? Mm -hmm. Um, I, I have moved almost exclusively to my business accounts for everything and then um, just do personal things on personal accounts. But if there is that tipping point, if you've been on Facebook for a while and you're just starting the business account where you have to move people over and it can take a little time of like just inviting people to come, you know, reminding people over and over and over again, hey, come see this. Um, and even um, incentivizing people to move over and like your business page for a chance to win something or, you know, there's, uh, I'm sure Patrick can talk to that uh, more like tactically about how to move people over to your business account, but, um, but there's no harm in, in posting things in both places too. Yeah, especially, especially in the short term, like in the long term, you know, like, okay, I need to have a business account for both. But in the short term, I just want to get as much attention as I can. So worst case scenario, if you have to double post, uh, not the end of the world. Uh, Jonah's got a question for real, you. Real okay. quick, Pat, but, real quick. Sorry, Debbie, there's a feature when you sell a piece like an original or a limited edition, where it'll display the little red sold sticker, you know, type of thing on your on your piece, so that you can leave it on your website. And uh, if we can put that, uh, Marco, if we can put that in the show notes, that would be great. So that there'll be a direct link right to, right to where you can do that. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Meg, so Jonah's question is, what was your email copy for the sale? Mm, uh, it's very long, but uh, it basically said, uh, spend $150 or more, save 15%. So I, I set a bar for this sale for people to um, spend some money and get a piece, like a larger piece for their house or something that's more of like a statement piece. Um, and uh, the rest of it was that I was doing dispatches throughout the week uh, where I was telling a story about individual pieces that I had done. And so it was kind of a long form paragraph image, paragraph image. Um, is that what, does that answer your question? Yeah, I think that does. You, you yeah, and I, think, I think it's important to say like, you know, Jonah and for everyone listening to that, like when Meg is running the sale, it's not just about that one email, it's the whole stack right? Yeah. Like she's hitting Instagram, she, you know, she's doing multiple emails, like after it of the individual pieces and, you know, weaving the marketing into it. Cause I, I love the idea, you guys, of you announce a sale, right? And then, you know, like, let's say your sale is lasting, like, let's just call it a week. And then every day in that sale, you're highlighting a different piece and talking about different stuff. And it might be a focus on your best sellers or a couple of them and you're showing them and, you're doing different things like that. I think like, you know, when Meg was saying earlier um, and she was referencing uh, what Patrick has talked about in regards to how nobody's really seeing your content. I think it's so important to realize that when you do these things and when Meg is like, when you're bringing that email into my box or when you're going on Instagram and you're doing it, you're making it easy for that person to not have to seek out that information about that piece. And they probably won't do that anyway. Right. And so I get this email in my box or I catch you on Instagram and I never saw that piece of the bison or something like in the, you know, landscape. And then I'm reading your inspiration on that. And then I'm like, wait a minute, that just connected with me on, you know, like on what inspires me. Right. And you did all the work, Meg. You see how important that is. You did the work and you brought that to me on platform. And, the, on, and when I say on platform, that means my email client at that moment is my platform or Instagram is the platform, right? And it can be, that's, that could be all it takes for me to go and click and take advantage of the sale because you caught me in that moment and I had a need. I'm looking at my walls and I'm going, you know what? I got to make this place more inspiring. This is where I'm working from now. And, you know, it's, it's all of that tactical together that makes the whole thing work so well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And people like to, I mean, you guys, everybody knows this because we're all artists. We all are doing whatever we're making for a reason. And people, uh, sometimes we assume that people understand why we're painting what we're painting or, or drawing or photographing or whatever. Um, and people really like to have a story so that when they have people to their home or their office or wherever they're putting it, they can say, and this artist does X, Y, Z, and this is why they painted this. And this, I connected with this because, and uh, people love that for anything they buy. So that's something that we continually over and over and over and over, and over again have to talk about. And it can, it can feel like, oh my God, I can't stand to see myself write these words one more time. And we were talking about that earlier, but like it, that stuff really, really, really works. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions for Meg, guys can put them in the chat. Um, it's too hard. Well, anyway, if, if somebody's got one, just raise a hand and I'll see if I can see on the gallery video. Uh, Susan, yes, you just change the, um, the inventory number from one to zero and then it marks it as sold. She asked if the sold feature works even if you sell the piece offline. Yep. yep. Uh, Emily, uh, Emily Kalina has a, has a question. We can unmute her since it's a longer question. So that means uh, probably better for can you find yeah. verbal. There's so many on this one. It's like, hold on. I, I got her. Okay. Emily, go ahead. Thank you. Um, so uh, I, I love hearing about like all the follow-up that you're doing and stuff like that. Um, that's not my strong suit. So I'm going to work on that. Um, not but, mine either, by the way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Good to know. Um, I have questions and I don't, I don't know if this is something that is as applicable, but so I'm, I'm a digital artist. I do digital painting and, um, cool. and I find, uh, I find a lot, it's, it's, I'm having a hard time, like, like I'm making, I'm, I'm trying to educate people as I'm, as I'm selling. And so, um, how do you, how do you like educate people about what your, your process is or whatever without, um, you know, it's such a tricky thing. And um, 
And for me also, I try to, I, I don't want to, you don't want to give away the farm, right? You don't want to like give it all away, but at the same time, people want to know, they want the story, all that sort of stuff. How do you do that so that you, you know? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And while I'm working, um, I am taking pictures constantly and videos, even if I never share it, I'm always time-lapsing everything I do um, and uh, always taking pictures while I'm doing research um, and just having, and then like, as I do it, I just immediately, the first picture I take, I start a, um, what's it called? An album on my phone and I, sh I save the photos into there. So when I'm ready to share it, even if it's a year later, I'm not scrolling like, when yeah. the hell did I paint that thing? Right. So, um, so I've taken tons of pictures and for you digitally, it's a little different because there's not like the active, you know, right. creating, but I don't know if you're, are you creating in like Photoshop, Illustrator, or are you using? Um, I use Procreate, so um, okay. I, but I take, and I don't, I don't like the time-lapse thing because I go back and forth from a reference and people get, you know, weird about that shit. Yeah. So like, it's like, okay. I just, I try to just do, um, but I do it in stages. And so sometimes yeah. I'll put together a time-lapse and then, yeah. you know, that's you like- record your, Cause you can record your process and procreate. Are you doing, using that? Um, not a lot, function? Um, not a lot just because- I it, love that. I know, I know. It's just, that. It, <laughs> all right. Even if you're not gonna share it, like it doesn't matter just because you can't ever go back and re-record it uh, later. Right. And so right. while you're making something, always hit record. And you may, it may just be for you and you may never share it and that's fine. Like I have so many time-lapse videos on my phone that will never see the light of day and that's fine. Like, you know, maybe 1% actually go onto my Instagram account, but make a habit of always recording and, you know, collecting a library of your inspiration in the process. And then okay. later when you come out of your like creating mode and move into your marketing mode, then you can look at it through a different lens and and edit it and you can always edit out the um the reference pieces if you don't want people to see that but i mean your chance of um having like copyright problems or whatever it is that you're concerned about with that are are pretty low unless you're doing something that's like really blatantly ripping someone off so um yeah does that answer your question uh oh uh oh uh oh, oh. She got uh -oh. muted. Oh, I have to do it. I have oh, to keep man. it moving. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, Meg, do you, we have two questions. One is, do you have different strategies for driving sales to your prints versus your originals? I'll let you deal with that one. I'll give you, give you the other one. Okay. Um, uh, yes and no. Um, I mean, sometimes people like to see the originals in person. So, um, you know, I'm doing a little bit more like, uh, in-depth video content for those. So I'm like making a, you know, a video of myself talking about the originals and showing close-ups. And I'm not doing that necessarily for um, each uh, print sale. So there's a little bit more uh, time that goes into those, I guess. But for the most part, it's, you know, from a marketing standpoint, if I'm standing back, it's pretty much all the same. Yep. And we've got multiple questions about how much money you're spending on marketing. And before you answer that, <laughs> however, time, however, however you want a time to question that. instead of money. Yeah. Uh, well, Tommy was yeah. answering, um, I think from the financial standpoint, but independent of that, don't think it, don't think it comes from a spend. It doesn't come from a spend and don't think if you spent that much, uh, if I just spent no. as much as Meg did, not I would, because that's not it. That's not it. No, not at all. And uh, the things that are working for me, like I've tried a lot of different things and the most money I spend on marketing is typically not the things that work the best. So, um, yeah, I'm, uh, I, I would say my biggest spend last year was on Facebook ads and those, those had a really good return for me. Um, but, um, no, I'm not spending a lot on marketing. I'm mostly doing it all myself. Yeah, and Meg, how much time do you spend roughly a day or maybe a week on marketing? Um, I mean, in normal circumstances when it's not uh, like Let's say that. Yeah. yeah, under normal circumstances, probably uh, uh, probably like five, like minimum, minimum two or three, maximum 10 hours a week, depending on what's going on. That is not that much. No, it's not. Yeah, it's that's I mean, yeah, that's not that much. And you've got two kids. 
and they're easy right now. Really, really easy to they're take. So, they're so easy, you guys. Yeah, just wish you had four, <laughs> Could have four. even five, maybe. Oh my God, no. <laughs> um, okay, well, we need to be sensitive on Meg's time, guys. So if you've got any other further questions for Meg, um, throw them in there and then we can, we can get her to answer them. And then Meg, do you have anything else, big picture you want to get into, want to touch on? Um, no, advice? let's answer questions. Um, you have anything for us, no. Meg? No, you guys are doing great. I feel like this, like, you know, I, I am savvy, but I'm learning a lot from you guys. So for everyone, you know, keep, keep listening to their rants. <laughs> yeah. And I think, I mean, you know, you know, what's a good point to make is just like, um, I try to, I try to say this a lot to everybody at different levels. It's like, it doesn't matter what level you're at, like even at your level, right. You're still trying to up your marketing game from where you're at to the next level to, t to build your business and take your sales even further. You know what I mean? And I, I always Absolutely. make like, like, I've always made the point, like, you know, even when I built a business that had over $10 million in revenue, like I'm still, I, I need different experts at that time. You always need different people to help you out. It just depends on what actual level you're at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, yeah. Are there, uh, any more questions here? Uh, Meg, you've been uh, a reference customer for a couple of years. At what point did your sales take off? Uh, what's next? Where are you going with everything? Um, uh, yeah. Facebook ads and Instagram. Yeah. What's What's next? Where am I going? Uh, I don't know. TBD. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, taking it day by day right now. Um, one, sales one took off. Time, one step at a time. Yeah. Um, sales took off when I uh, got licensed with KU. So that was, um, I was in the process of creating that project when I signed on for art storefronts so that I would have a platform to launch it. Like I needed art storefronts to actually like get that licensing and be able to fulfill orders. So they were kind of hand in hand, but as I had been an artist for a few years full time before that, and it was kind of like, because I was doing my own. So they were kind of hand in hand together. Um, do I use a VA? No, I have someone who, who helps me part-time here in Kansas city. Um, and she helps, uh, with like things that need to be done in person. So, um, but yes, I do have help. Um, KU, someone's asking KU, KU is Kansas university where she, where she went. Oh yeah. The university of Kansas, my alma mater. So I'm, I'm licensed with them to use the Jayhawk image and I sell paintings of those and it's been really, really great for me. And shameless um, plug, we have a in-depth podcast episode interview. Yes. Where she tells yeah, the whole story, uh, which is totally worth a listen. It's a uh, few episodes back where you can get that at uh, Art Street. You can just search the Art Marketing Podcast and it'll come up. Art Marketing Podcast, yeah. comment, comment Meg. Um, but good. I think, uh, I think that covers it. Meg, thank you so yeah. much. Thank you, Meg. I'm sure everybody appreciated it. Drop a comment if, yeah. if you guys uh, to give us feedback if you liked hearing from Meg and then yeah. we can probably get her back in the future sometime. Yeah, DM me on Instagram if you guys have any questions too. Always happy to help. Thank awesome. you guys Thank so you, Meg. much. Thanks, Meg. All right, gotta go get it. Yep, you see that? I even muted Meg. That's how it goes. <laughs> okay, I'll mute everybody. All right, Meg, next you up. see the comments. They're coming through in a fury. Yeah. Um, next up, Kimberly Camerata, you're, you're on, go ahead. Hi. Um, I was wondering if I could get your advice, uh, negotiating with a potential customer that's been contacting me since last week. Um, I don't have a lot of practice at this. Um, uh, he's a lawyer and, uh, for the past like three or four days, he's been, he signed up for my email list. And um, he sent me photos of other fine art that he's bought. And he told me his daughter is studying for um, a master's in art. What kind of, what kind of lawyer he is? Do you know? A real estate lawyer. You, do you have any real estate law needs? No. But the, the, the thing is, since he ha he's purchased a lot of fine art that are portraits and his daughter is getting a master's in art, he asked her to, to do the commission and she wouldn't do it. She said watercolor is too hard. But this is a person who knows the cost of art 
And so after four days of emailing him, I, um, I told him uh, $7,000 because he wanted a two feet by three feet painting with four people and the Trevi fountain. And he goes, um, I think I'll just pick a print. <laughs> but um, I don't know if I did something wrong or um, I or if I should like email him back and tell him a lower price or I don't know how to do it. <laughs> I mean, did he ever like, like, do you list what that would cost anywhere, anywhere or was that kind of out of the blue? Like, well, well, he's been on my website and everything that's two feet by three feet costs that same price. So I figured he would know. And so after a couple of days of emailing back and forth, um, he said, well, how about for, for the commission I want? And so I just said the same price and it would be a lot of work. I mean, four people plus the Trevi fountain, you know, it would take like six weeks to paint it. But um, uh, I don't know if by saying the thing about the print, he's trying to talk me down or he seems he, really he, nice, but probably, I just- He probably is a little bit, but it might be a little bit too expensive for him. But the way there's the ultimate way to figure this out is to, you know, it, it announces like if you're doing a sale, right? Announce a sale and then you send them a one-off email and you say, Hey, you know, I thought about you because I'm running the sale right now on all my prints. And I just wanted to let you know, if you're willing to do this, you know, before this ends, I'll give you 15% or whatever it is off the commission. If you're willing to do that, like if, if you Kimberly are willing to give him that deal, if you subtract 15% off 7,000, what is that? That's like a what eleven hundred dollars roughly? Um, so if you would do it for fifty nine hundred, right? Um, and then then that's what I would do, and that that'll be the ultimate truth. Because if he doesn't do it, then um, it might just be too expensive for him. Yeah, I I would also say too, like you know, in these times, you sort of do need to discount. I mean, everyone's yeah. like the deal, and it does make the difference. And so I would probably say, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, whatever his name is, real estate guy. Well, just to rewind for one second, it would have been a classic example if you had a real estate need and then you said, I really have this, this complex real estate need that I need done. And what do you charge for that? I'll give you 5,500. And then just shut up and see what he says. It's like, you know what, Dick, you can, you can negotiate like that. I'm sorry to say that, but you know, you can negotiate like that. So can I, but anyway, I would give him the deal and I would say, here's the deal. If that's what you really want, I know that these are tough times financially. I'd love to do the painting, but you have to decide today. And give them a, just a hard press, like 24 hours, 48 hours to decide and then, and then go. So that's what I would do. I don't think it's, you've done anything wrong. Anyone with the brain right now is negotiating like crazy. You, uh, yeah, like exactly. Everything. That's the truth. And another thing that you can do, Kimberly, is you can also give him another option at a, like a $3,000 price point that's smaller, right? And just be like, because if you think that maybe if it's out of his budget, maybe you can, you know, give him a size that you're happy with. You know what I mean? That you're still happy with how much money you're going to make on it, but you're giving him a chance to do that. You know, there's a lot of ways to like play this game with the negotiation. Like if a guy, if a guy comes back at, you know, a much lower price, then you could say like, and you look at like, let's say you're at like 5,900 and he's like, well, I'll do it for like, I'll do it for like 4,800. Well, then my next reply would be, well, you know, can you buy two, you know, like, there's a lot of ways to play that game. And, 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 and you have to obviously look at it and go, am I even willing to do that? Or what am I willing to do? You could be like, okay, I won't do a 20 by 30, 24 by 36. I'll do a 16 by 20 at that price. No problem. Let's do that. You know? So that's, that's what I would do. There's, so I, I would go back to him for sure though. I would, would that, go back to him would for that sure. Disarming him and like unass unassuming, unthreatening voice that she has too. She could, she could, be, she could be taught to be one of the best negotiators in the business, and then just right at the end, get the yeah. Goal. And if you're doing it in conjunction with a sale, it's a very natural thing to reach out to him to do. In fact, if there's anybody else that has contacted you for a commission that never closed the deal, right? You should email every single one of them and say, "Hey, now's the time. Now's the time, right?" And you just might get a handful of them. Any, everybody should do that. Yeah, and we definitely want an update on that one. Okay, Mark Grasso, yeah, you're next. Definitely. Mark, go ahead. Yep. So thank you for having these calls. Hey, um, 
I'm very new to this, although I was on other uh, platforms prior to this and I'm getting off of those. Um, I'm still waiting for my tech audit this week, um, but I had um, a couple questions. In the giveaway that goes out as you launch, do we mention anything about pandemic in that or just go strictly with the, the giveaway um, edited for my stuff? Yeah, I would tailor I would tailor things a little bit to to speak to the time that we're in. It just we have that copy, don't we? I think I, I think believe the copy is in there. I think he's following like the true like you're launching your website. Yeah, I'm following the true yeah. launch the website. Yeah, so yeah, I would I would totally do it. I I would say you know what you know just in your tone of voice the idea that you're trying to capture is this time sucks, terrible time to launch a business. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to launch the business. Okay. And here's the discount and just that, that like a little turn, just like that to acknowledge it and say, I'm still moving forward. Um, I think is, it, I think is perfect. And that's what I would do. Yeah. And Mark, okay. use that, you know, the, like try to incorporate the language. If you saw my presentation last week um, on Tuesday, uh, that was an important one. Um, it, the, the very first like 12 minutes of it, but you know, you just want to think about the fact that everybody's at home and it's like, how does your art fit into their new world? Right. So like I'm at home and I mentioned how I'm pretty disappointed with my home, like work environment. I don't feel like it's like, it's like creative and productive enough for me to like do, do the output that I want to be doing. And so I'm looking for what I am going to put on these walls to make this spot more inspirational and all that type of stuff. And I think if you tap into that, um, then, you know, like, like for example, everything Pat just said, and I would love to help you make your home and or, and or home office more beautiful, inspirational, whatever your content is that you think will resonate with them, then you're totally like on message with what's happening right now with what people are doing. Okay. And you're running a sale and it's like a perfect, it's like a perfect situation. Okay. I, I felt like I should add something, but I just wanted to make sure before I did it. Um, the other thing was that when you, in the text for running it, as I follow it, it says that after it's over, they will get something, meaning I'm assuming a coupon or something to then go buy. But I haven't found anything that is that describes that next, I'm going to say coupon or anything that they're going to get. Am I missing something somewhere? We'll, uh, we'll look at we are. Um, Taylor, let's, uh, Taylor, Chris, let's take a look at that. Um, and uh, let's get back to Mark. Um, or anybody on the team who's on this call, we have like four or five people on the team uh, on this, on this uh, Zoom. Um, it should be in there. Uh, I, know, I know exactly what you're talking about. And so I don't know if something is either missing in that text or not, um, but it should be in there. Yeah, it sounds somebody, like there is. But one it's, one it's, of our it's, team members is going to reach out to you. Yeah, it's, it's a discount. And welcome aboard and congratulations. You know, yes. there's a, a, as a corollary, there's a tremendous amount of stats. Uh, who knows how true this holds, but... There's a tremendous amount of stats that some of the most successful businesses in the world are the ones started during a recession, um, started during tough times. So keep your head up. Um, Mark, okay, John Davis. Taylor just looked in the, he just wrote in the comments down there. It's on day 10 of the new website giveaway playbook. So boom. But maybe Taylor, let's, let's take a look at, maybe it needs to be explained a little earlier on one of the days so that it's uh, less confusing. Yeah, we'll audit it. Okay, John, go ahead. Hey, uh, first of all, that was really a great bunch of information. Really appreciate hearing all of this today. Awesome. Thank you. Second of all, I thought I'd mention I was really impressed with your staff because I figured out that having some sold stickers on pieces would be a good idea. I tend to have very realistic looking subdued tones and the sold sticker was sort of a hot pink and your staff kindly changed it to a more subdued sort of maroon color, which I really appreciate. That was awesome. pretty cool. Um, my question really has to do with graphic dimensions. I went back and forth with Bay Photo quite a while ago and got sample prints and really tried to make sure the quality control was there. And I'm wondering if there's any similar way to kind of make sure that people who buy prints are getting nice stuff and they're happy with them with graphic dimensions. Well, they have a sample pack, like several sample packs, actually. There's a canvas sample pack. There's a paper sample pack. Um, and if you just go to asfprints.com, that you can, you can go on there. And, and why don't we put the link in the show notes here and in the comments? 
Um, there it is. Marco's that fast. ASF prints get samples. It's, it's right there, uh, John. Um, yeah, so you can click that. And then what's th what that's going to do, in fact, oh, I thought I had him here. I have him at the office. Um, you'll, get a, you'll get a swatch that's about yay big, like maybe a, I don't know what, I want to say it's probably like a, like a eight by 10 maybe of each one printed. Um, so you can feel it, look at the texture and all that type of stuff. And then what I would do, so that's just the, a cheap way of looking at every single media type in your hand. What I would do from there is, is maybe buy a print, uh, a small print of the ones that you like, um, not stretched or framed or any of that. And I mean, unless you obviously want to test that quality, but you can, you know, you can get those really cheap, right? Like if you just buy like an eight by 10 and just see if you like it. I mean, you can of course buy whatever size you want to, if you want to validate a bigger size, but that's what, that's what, and that's what I would do. I thought of that and maybe temporarily turning down your profit ratio to zero, ordering a print and then. Well, you, I'm sorry. So if, really you go, if you go into your back end into the orders section, there's a self-made orders button there mm -hmm. and you can buy prints right through there. And it's just, all it does is just charge you your cost. Your markup is not there. So that's how you're supposed to buy prints. Okay, that answers my question. That's true. Yeah, and the discount, the current discount will automatically be applied um, to it. You'll see it after you place the order because you get a, you get a separate invoice receipt like from, um, from Bay Photo after you place the order, but the discount will be there. Um, that's being ran at the time as you, as long as you see that purple bar going across the top, like your vendor is running a discount, it will be there after the fact. And that's how you do it. Okay. Next up is Muffy. Muffy, go ahead. Oh, great. Thanks guys. Uh, I guess my major question is I've been using your lead generating techniques and trying to make some new ponds to stick my fishing pole in. And my big feeling is a lot of the niches I'm looking at since I work with island and tropical art are um, kind of, you know, they're suffering right now like we are. And they, I'm worried about going after them. I'm saying, well, we don't want to think about it right now. Let's think about it when the travel industry gets going again or that kind of thing. Do you have any recommendations for that? Well, I think right off the bat, I think that, I mean, you are right in the sense of like hotels and places like that, but where the opportunity is right now is with home decor. That's where home decor sales have exploded, like home decor, home DIY, um, mm -hmm. everything related to that. And so you want to, um, the opportunity for you is the people who want those in their homes and their home offices. Okay. And I that's still, that applies to everybody. And so I think, I think what's happening right now on our platform, why, you know, where, why the sales are so high um, is, is that people are tapping into that, right? By doing these techniques. And so I think you just do these techniques, um, these on, the online ones that we've been talking about, and, and then you'll, you'll try to penetrate those, those types of Facebook uh, groups and Instagram accounts that have your potential customer on them, right? That's actually like a, a home consumer. Mm -hmm. Okay, the other follow-up to that is the one I told you about with the women's shelter, the domestic violence yes. shelter I was working with. Mm -hmm. I got the artwork. I hadn't done a sale because I've been working on this project with the shelter, but I got them to sign a contract. It's giving me a donation link on my page. They have to, they're sending, going to send out emails and social media to promote it. And I'm figuring that's going to be a good base, but I'm just getting ready to post that and get it up there. And they're going to con run a contest for about three weeks. That is awesome. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Muffy, you're, like I said last time, you're on it. Like, just keep doing more, as many more of those as you can. And, you know, some of them are, Patrick said this before, I think it's important. Like, some of them are going to work and some of them aren't. And you don't know what they are, but that's just marketing. And it's all, it's more about quantity. Like, how many, how many uh, shots you fire than it is like any specific one. And I, I, I love that you put that together. Yeah, you can't hang your hat on, on thinking any one of them is gonna kill it. It's just, it's a volume game. It's just a Yeah, it's a volume game. game. It's the system that works, right? How you got that done is the most valuable part of it. And you wanna just replicate that as much as possible online, offline, however you can do it, right? Okay, good question. Tell me, you're up. 
Uh, well, the question that I had before was uh, was what you asked Meg about, you know, what how much money or time was she spend on marketing? Um, but I just want to say to you guys, um, thanks so much for doing this. Um, things were picking up for me prior to everything standing still because I'm very comfortable talking to people face to face. Um, and now it's just a matter of me changing things around and having to use a computer like I'm doing with you guys right now. I'm not used to it, but I think practice makes improvement um, and I'm not working towards perfection. Um, so I just wanna say thanks guys for doing this. And um, I'm very optimistic that things will definitely uh, be getting better. So that's, awesome. all, that's all I just wanna say. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Tammy. Good to see you. Love, love that purple jazzy thing you're wearing too. I mean, that thing's awesome. All right, Ben, you're up. Go ahead, Ben. Hi, how are you all doing? Good, how are you doing? Good, I missed your baseball cap though. Uh, anyway, um, so yeah. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the promo uh, for the uh, I guess what, what do you call it the um, Home Art promo that's coming up. Yep. You talked about that. You're talking about the Zoom sale. Yeah, the, right. The Zoom sale, which I think is a great idea. Great idea. Um, right. I've done a come a couple of promos on Instagram, and I know it's not really the way to s sell my photographs, but I have noticed that I've gotten a lot bigger audience now. Mm -hmm. How do I get that audience uh, into, uh, how do I engage that audience? How do I actually do that? So you're, I can do a about real Instagram ad on, yeah. on, uh, on Instagram. I don't want to do ads on Facebook right now. Mm -hmm. I find Instagram is working a lot better for me. Okay. So, so here's, here's, here's what I would do. And, and the short answer is you're going to be at this all year, all the time and you constantly attempt to move the attention that you do have your Instagram followers over to the venues that you don't have, your email, your website, Facebook, anywhere else. You're constantly moving them around. Go into the hand-to-hand -hand combat, and here's what I would do. Somebody leaves a comment on your post, instantaneously send them a direct message. In the direct message say, Ben, thank you so much for your comment. I really appreciate it. If you wanna see some of the best stuff that I only share with my email list, sign up. Here's how you can do it, and do that, and send 50 of those a day. Send that, send that for as many people comment on your post Every single solitary day and try to get them back to your email list. That's it. There's nothing else you have to do. Do just that. Okay. But the giveaway there... should do it too, right? Because you're linking back, you know, to your to your giveaway page. So like occasionally as you're doing the giveaways, you will extract these people off of uh, the platforms. Yeah. And you can you can, you know, Facebook gives you the ability to set up an audience, if, if ads are, are, are something you're doing, set up an audience or those that have engaged with your Instagram profile over the last 365 days. So you could shorten that down to 30 days and, right. and shorten it down to 10 days and, and, and just show ads just to those people so that everyone that engages with your Instagram profile would see ads too. That's another way of doing it. Okay. Deborah Davis asked a great question here. She said, you keep talking hand-to-hand -hand contact. Well, hand-to-hand -hand combat, either way. Exactly. Um, is there a playbook on that? That's something that we've got to put together. Um, it's yeah. various different touch points, but it's something that we've got to put together. Yeah. Um, let's write, uh, Taylor, can you write a note on that? Um, I think I, th there are some resources, but maybe we just need to create one resource that kind of aggregates them all. Like for example, we, we, re we just released a feature a week or two ago, um, on upselling. I don't know if you guys saw that, but when you're looking at your orders, you will see like a little red icon. Um, next to the order number, it'll it'll only be read if if the system believes that there is an upsell opportunity there. And what an upsell opportunity is defined as is that visitor viewed multiple products, but they only bought like one of them or or less than what they what they viewed. And so it highlights in red the one that the the ones that they viewed that they didn't buy, and you can contact them really quickly to make an upsell offer after the fact. So um, yeah, we, we released that like a week or two ago, but we've got a note, we'll, we'll make a note on that, Deborah. Okay. okay, thank you. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Ben. All right, Jerry, you're up next, go ahead. Oh, hold on, you did the wrong one, hold on. Okay, now we are, Jerry, go ahead. Hi guys, uh, long time listener, first time caller. I love it, uh, I love it, I know the reference. <laughs> uh, I'm a, fine art nature photographer, nature photographer, and I'm calling about um, something that Emily touched on earlier, and that is um, how do I, as a photographer, show a work in progress? 
I saw a, I saw a great one the other day. I'm going to try to show it here. Um, generally, I believe, and Pat, you can comment on this too, but um, I believe... Uh, yeah, like, there's, there's a lot of opportunities for narrative here. And one is getting to the spot where you actually took it and telling the whole story of all of that. Exactly. I started here, gassed up the car, uh, you know, picked up some supplies here, look at this beautiful view, this vista, and just make a narrative out of it. And even, you know, regardless of where the spot is, I mean, sometimes they get more interesting than others, but sometimes they get really interesting. I mean, I would have my chair and I would have my chair sat right next to my tripod and I would be in my chair drinking a cold beer and say, this was the cold beer that I drank after I finished the shot. And then I would get back into the office and I would show a couple of screenshots of your process in Lightroom. And that's the story. Yeah, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. I'll put it as close as I can. But here was um, a photographer who had his whole setup going like uh, by the river, right? Oh. And he was talking, and this was on Instagram, and he was talking about, you know, um, how he had his Hasselblad right there and was getting ready for the shot and, and, and so forth. And it just popped Can you right put in. that back up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One second. Um, Can you see it? Yeah, I got it. So that's his iPad on the left? I guess. I, it looks like something bigger than that. It's like a big monitor of some sort. But either <laughs> way, but, but you can see, like, the point there is that he's, he, he's, he's managed to kind of weave his story into it about how he's setting up. And you, you have to remember that, like, the average Joe, like, um, they have no idea how you're doing this. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't know, like, you know, how long it takes you to get that right shot, how many hours you're spending scouting it out, you know, like that whole process that you go through, like even from how early you're getting up in the morning or at night or like, you know, all that stuff, that's the story. Like you got that, you can document that whole story and it'll, it'll bring, it'll bring the consumer into your world. Right. And then that's going to, that's going to build that connection that's going to, you know, help them understand even the value of what you do. Like, it's not just like pull an iPhone out of your pocket randomly while you're hiking. Boom. You know what I mean? There's, there's actually mm -hmm. something quite strategic and artful about what you do. And that's how, that's how you'll do it. John, on so is this an in, I would email add, form? Or? Uh, yeah. all, all, all of the platforms, right? You create the content, like you got pictures of what you do and then you should, you should email it out. You should post it on Facebook and Instagram. Like basically just get it at those think of those things as like broadcast mechanisms right mm -hmm. they're just different they're just totally different so email facebook instagram they're all different broadcast platforms so you just want to just create the content and do it on all that's essentially like romance content like when we talk about romance marketing and on the art marketing calendar like make a romance post you'll see it there they're there like every week right that's what we're talking about John from Facebook says, I, and I like this, I would add, what was the concept about the shot? Um, what did you do to plan the shot? Like, you know, how did it, how did it originate in your head? And don't overthink it. Just start telling stories and you'll get better at it too as, as time goes on. As you get I, 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 I love that. I, I think like from start to finish, like I would love to see you live on Instagram where Patrick was talking about lives earlier. I'd love to see you live on there. Podcast because, coming up this week. Podcast coming up. Because you can create a story after the fact. I think that's one of the biggest hacks that Meg you know, that we've talked about and Meg was referring to, like, rather than having to like, you know, put together an Instagram story, right? You just go live and you're on video and then you can, you've got a story, right? You, it's just, right when the live thing ends, it asks you, do you want to just publish this as a story? And you push the button. But, but right when you, like, when you're thinking about going and getting a shot, I would love to hear you talking about, like, here's what I'm about to go do. I'm like, you're like plotting this, you're planning what you're about to go do whether it's a trip that you're going on to go take a bunch of shots or the morning of, and there's one shot you're going after, like that is great content. That's like, to me, that would be extremely entertaining as a, as a consumer of like a, uh, or, or somebody following you as a photographer. No question. Great question too. Love the, love the first time caller. And, and painters should be doing that too. What you should be doing that too. Yeah, everybody. Pam the story, like, you're from up. Start to finish of getting that piece done. Everybody always talks about the more they do that, the piece is usually sold if it's a painting, you know, before, before it's even done. Okay, Anne, you're up. Me? Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah, cool. Hi. Um, yeah, I always wanted to thank you too. I listened to all the replays and it's so extremely helpful. Really thrilled. And um, super happy that I finally get to do all the marketing. 
and because um, um, of COVID not having um, a second job. So, um, and I did, a, I did an ad for the, um, um, that uh, marketing campaign with the Zoom background. Mm -hmm. I thought it was really fun. And I did a video ad with it and I used some um, free online walls with, you know, photo resources and all that. Mm -hmm. And um, um, I used out of habit Instagram format. And later on, I thought I'm doing this for um, actually a Facebook ad. And uh, um, so that might actually not be smart. Are there any, is there any advice um, uh, what for ratio format to do our Facebook ads in? Yeah, you, you can get away with a square format on Facebook and it still works pretty well. So, you know, if you, if you like, first things first, get the thing in the water. So the square format on Facebook, is that going to kill you? No, it doesn't take up all the screen real estate that Facebook potentially has on author, but the square format still, still works pretty well. Um, in a perfect world, you would, you would just Google Facebook ad sizes. And there's like all of these different sites that like constantly update what all the appropriate ad sizes are. But big picture, you know, Facebook can do a widescreen format. Instagram does the square. And then there's the story ads, if you're going to do the story ads, which are nine by 16. Um, but if you're, if you're just going to do one and just want to get it in the water, don't, don't worry about it. The, the square format will still work great. All right. For the future, I will research that. And um, that brings me to the second question. Do you have um, a recommendation on launching times on those um, ads, days, day times, anything? Yeah. So the thing with, with, with ads and, and attempting to time them, what normally happens is you submit the ad, you turn it on, and then you have to wait for it to get approved. And so yeah. that really just kind of knocks out any sense of timing anyway. So just, just turn them on. Don't, don't overthink that part. Yeah, All right. Facebook, Facebook is really good at knowing who they want to go after when you turn your ads on, you know, so they'll, they'll, they'll do it at the right time for what they think is going to do best for you. I think the All other right. thing is like my advice as well, and is, um, is just do the square format and don't even worry about it. I mean, that's what we do for our own ads. Cause it's like, who has the time? right? Yeah. Like it's just, it's, it's too much work and there's way met better marketing uh, time that you can spend on marketing, doing more of the other stuff that we want you to do than to be sitting there. You know what I mean? Like just monkeying around with like video <laughs> formats. I, I know love, I do every, like we do everything like Instagram on, on like, like square on Facebook for art storefronts, just because it's like, okay, it's just going to work on everything and we're done and we're on to the next thing, you know? That's that's kind of what I thought. Good, good, good. And yeah, I did actually um, do a lot of the other things that you're recommending and I have little successes and feedback also in the offline world. So it's, I'm what? super happy I, I, you have all this in the, it's a wonderful timing. So awesome. um, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And to quick question tomorrow is there's again that beginners workshop type thing and any um, website audits would still be there, correct? Yes, yes. Thank you for bringing that up. That's a great point. Yeah, we have a, we, we have a new workshop every Wednesday which is the marketing launch workshop is what it's being called. And they're doing website audits and they're doing, uh, they're going through some of the resources for people who, if you basically just got started on marketing and haven't done all that much, even if you've been a customer for a while, um, that's a, that's a great one to go to. So they'll, they'll go over a bunch of the most recent resources and walk you through a bunch of stuff. And it's one of those where you just go to one, you go to it once, maybe twice, and then, and then after that, you, uh, you don't have to go to that workshop anymore. Yep. Great question. Welcome aboard. Congrats. Um, Mark, over to you. Mark Yee. Hey, Patrick. Hey, Nick. <clears throat> hey, Mark. I uh, finally finished my blog. I want you guys to look at it. Um, and my questions would be, are the best way to exploit, uh, exploit this? I mean, do I just post the link on Facebook, Instagram and be done with it? Um, and your thoughts and suggestions on the look and um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So ideally you would email it to your list. You would drive all the traffic from your list to the post itself. And then you would also post it on Facebook. You can talk about it on Instagram, uh, but you can't necessarily oh. post a link unless you want to, um, you know, unless you want to put the link in your bio to the blog post itself. Um, that would be the thing. But Nick, take it over. I've got, I got low space message i gotta clear this up yeah no problem um mark what is the what is the uh url um uh, uh, photography.com yes okay yeah and um 
look at you at the background here. I, yeah, I, uh, a web designer did that for me. So I, that's, that's not my handiwork. Okay, blog. Here we go. Yeah. yeah. So there it is. I mean, that's, it's not, it's published, but I haven't advertised it yet. And um, it's great. I love how you have, um, you, 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 you know, when you're doing, uh, if it's a long post, like breaking it up with images is always good. Okay. This is, this is pretty extensive. <laughs> And then, so, you know, solid. I also put my secret sauce on there. I don't know if that's a good thing. Um, you know, my settings. I know some artists are really privy about that, but um, like right here. Uh, so I don't know if I should leave that on there. I think it's a good thing. You know, people always want, want to know what the settings are to your camera and um, in Adobe Photoshop. Yeah, if you think your consumers really care about that, that's fine. Um, I tend to care more about like the you behind it, right? Okay. The why, like what, what about this? Like, why did you take it? You know what I mean? And why, why do you like this image? Like, what does it mean to you? You know, I think it's a little bit different for everyone, but I don't think you have to publish that if you, if you don't want to, or, you know, you could, you could publish a part of it or not, but but uh, it's up to you. I'm just, I'm just giving you that, I'm giving you that angle out if you don't wanna, if you're afraid of publishing your secret sauce, right? So. Oh, no, I'm not afraid because, you know, the vision can't be duplicated. That, exactly. That's the <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Good job though. I like it. So just take the link, post it on Facebook, uh, talk about it on Instagram and that's it. No. Yeah, yeah. It, it, uh, well, what you would probably do is like, you know, maybe do a little lead in paragraph, right? Like leading into it um, and like kind of selling them, so to speak, on like why they should read it um, when you're sending this out by email or posting it on Facebook or Instagram, right? Like that's what you want to do. Like, you know, wh like why, what is this going to do for them, you know? And well, getting an inside example, I don't know what. How, how is it? How is this canvas shot or or pastel skies over San Juan Islands? What can I say to get them to make them think or connect that they need this in their house or office? Right, and and also, um, I mean, that's that's like the end goal. But the first goal is to get them to read to want to read it, right? Okay. So so what's the inside story or the or or you know the thing that's going to be really entertaining or interesting about this specific post that they should like, you know, if you said, like, if you posted that on there and you're like, you know, on this, uh, you know, evening or whatever it was, right. Like, you know, I did such and such. And, and on this post, I go into all of the details of how I took this shot and how challenging it was and, you know, and what happened. I mean, I'm just speaking out loud here, but you see what I'm saying. So then like the people who, who see that image and love it, go you know oh wait i'm gonna go i'm gonna go that's interesting to me i'm gonna go read about that you know okay and that's a that's a, that's a like I, that's a romance that's this is this is just you know this is just textbook romance marketing right here like i think I that, that on, I, I do that on facebook though right or, on all of them okay yeah on all of them always right remember they're just broadcasting platforms they're just different people that tend to spend a lot more time on instagram don't spend the same amount of time on Facebook and, you know, email, it's kind of the same thing. Emails, luck of the draw. You notice that you're only going to get like a 20% open rate, which means 80% of the people aren't going to see it. And then your click through rate is going to be really small, right? So you barely anybody's seeing it. So you want to, it's, this is, this is something that Patrick calls omni platform, right? Like get it on every platform and get it the most attention that you possibly can. That's it. Thank cool. You. Great. Good job. Okay, Debbie, you're up. Go ahead. Okay, great. Let's see. Oh, okay, I'm unmuted. Um, so I have a question. I'm getting my sale ready and I'm going to do it. I'm going to launch it on Thursday because I'm going to talk to the, your tech people today too. And because uh, there's some kinks I need to work out. But um, can I run it? If I started on Thursday, to, for, I was thinking I'd go till the end of the month with it. So April 30th, is that too long? No, go for it. 
All right. And then my next question but, is but, that- but you know what you can do tactically? Okay. You know what you can do is you can run it. Like look at the days, look how the days shake out, hmm. run it um, for like a week, right? Or whatever it is, and then extend it. Ah. So ah. you get, it's, the, it's that urgency up until that deadline. It's, it's called scarcity, right? Right. Uh, and so that you can send like the last chance and all that stuff. And then, and then after that, the next day or two days later, you can go, okay, this was so overwhelming. And, you know, I want to help everybody get what they want. So I'm extending it through the rest of the month, you know, uh, and you right. get another bite at the apple. All right, I'll do that. And then I was checking my MailChimp and I'm, I'm confused about this. It says I have 1,001 contacts, but only 818 subscribers. And then it says I have 58 non-subscribers. Well, some of those were people I did, like the, I um, put them on you know, your contact list in the art storefronts. And they're coming up as non-subscribers, so they're not in that 800 um, some odd numbers. Can you can you take uh, Marco? Can we have somebody uh, look into this for Debbie? We've the heard this before. Is that when people unsubscribe, they're still on the list, but they're they're off, so you can't email them anymore. So that's well, that's no, I have those people are already off, so I did lose like a certain amount. But then I put in, when I check the names on the non-subscribers, they're people I've kind of put in in the last few months because in December I had a party, an art party, and so I got names. And then I went on some trips and I got more names. So I think I put in about 58 names. I couldn't yeah, I've heard, I've heard of this before. Let's, 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 our tech team knows what this is. Okay. It's like, it's... For some reason with MailChimp, there's been, a, there's been a couple of people who have reported this where they add subscribers and they get added as like transactional email only, meaning that means to MailChimp that they don't want like marketing emails. They only want like transactional emails, like order emails and things like that. Hmm. Um, they'll, they'll, the best thing to do is let's, let's have them reach out to you okay. um, and, uh, and they'll help you with it. Okay, great. Um, let's see, I think... That was my main question. I'm having trouble with like putting the announcement bar in for the sale. I I am gonna talk to support today after this. They're amazing. They're the ones okay. that will help so you I'll with do that. that with them. Oh, then I was having trouble with, I did my ad. I took a picture of myself with a spot to put a painting and then in Canva, I dropped in a painting, but I, I, want, I did a screenshot of my pieces, but I couldn't do a screenshot of a print with a frame on it because it had my watermark on it. So is there a way to do a screenshot with the frame that doesn't oh, have you just water? Turn the watermark off temporarily and then just turn it right, take your screenshot and then just turn it right back on. Yeah, that would be easy. There's a setting and the, and the support team can show you where this is, but when you're on your store page and you're editing the store, there's a watermark option there to turn it on or off. You can just turn it off, take your re refresh the page on the other tab or whatever, take your screenshot, and then you're good to go. But they can help you, Debbie, if, if you need it, if you run into any problems there. Yep, they'll walk you through. Okay, Jonah, you there? You're next. Jonah, go ahead. Hey, my bad. How's it going, Patrick, Nick? Good. Jonah, how are we? I'm doing excellent. Uh, I have a question regarding a sale. And some people might be able to relate to this. And basically, you know, I have art, some art galleries who represent me um, in some different states. And, you know, art galleries, they sometimes will throw collectors discounts, maybe 10% at the most. And so, you know, I always try to keep my pricing consistent with the art galleries, the, you know, so the value holds the same. I want to discount my sale greater than 10%, you know, to make some sales, but not sure how to navigate this at the moment. Have you talked to them about it at all? I haven't opened the door yet. I wanted to see what you guys think. You know, you like, the, like potentially the easiest way to say it is like, like to not have like a bigger, a bigger argument about it is like, hey, you guys are shut down right now and I'm trying to make some things happen. Do you guys care? I just wanted to at least run this by you, but I'm, I wanted to run like a 15% off sale or whatever right. the number is that you want. And I'm sure they'll probably be like, yeah, that's fine, right? Because I mean, like, <laughs> Like, let's be honest right now, how can, I mean, 
they can't do anything. They can't, they can't make sales. They can't help you. Right. And so right. their business model is essentially paused. And so you, sh you, you should do whatever, whatever it is you need to do, but it's, it's a, it's a very respectful thing to, to do that first and then just hear how they reply, right. you know, right. like, are they really in it for you or are they not like, right. but, and, and then when everything opens back up, you can cross the new bridge if you want to do it again. Right. Like, Hey, that worked really well. You know, when I was on my own to do that, how can we do something here where I don't hurt you guys at all? In fact, I help you, you know, but I can still run these deals. You know, how can we do that? And there's always a way to make that happen. There's yeah. always a way. I, I, I don't believe at all. I think Jonah, like, I'm glad you brought this up because I think this is a really big point. And whenever I hear, um, whenever I hear artists talking about like, you know, they're, they're afraid to discount and you didn't say that you're obviously trying to discount, but, right. or the, or the gallery is trying to say that, like, you know, like the, that, like, how, like holding the value of the art. I, I just, I, I could not more vehemently disagree with that as, as somebody who like, you know, like, like, can, can, like I, I'm in that world, right? Like I'm in a world right. of where, where I can afford those types of things. And the way that I know that everybody looks at it as a buyer is I do not believe like, let's say you you want to, you want, you have a piece for like 10 grand or something. And I'm like, I want to buy it for seven grand. Right. Like I'm always going to negotiate. I, I'm going to negotiate every single time. Right. Right. And, and if, or if you run a discount, it might be the time that I just snatch one. Right. But here's the important point in my mind. And I know everybody thinks the same way. I do not believe that the value of the art is changing, okay? I instead believe that I just bought an asset for $8,000 that is worth 10,000, straight up. Like right. I, just got, I just got an asset that is actually priced at $10,000 and I got it for 8,000, but you know what? The day that I bought it, it's $10,000. That thing is worth $10,000, right? It's not worth right. eight, it is worth 10. And so I think that's where, you know, I don't know where, like where, why people think that when they discount that they're devaluing anything, they're actually attracting, you know, people with money to get something for cheaper than they otherwise would. And, right. and they already have like an increase in value of 20% on that piece. So it's the opposite. You know what I mean? Right. Anyways, well, I, I know that's kind of roundabout there, but did I answer your question originally? No, totally. I think the reason why our galleries don't um, publicly discount the, I think the, hands down 110% privately discount, but they do so privately so that other people don't know that they're doing it, you know, For kind sure. of just, you know, one-on-one -on -one kind of keeping it, you know, between parties instead of publicly saying, you know, this is, we're giving this collector 20% off, the, you know, so. Yeah. Um, well, that, yeah, that's it for me. That's all my questions, I think. All right, buddy. Good to see you. See you all soon. right. Okay, Michelle Arnold, you're up next. Go ahead. Hi. Hi. Um, well, so he, that actually his question brought up another question for me. Um, I hesitate when I'm discounting originals. Usually I just run print sales. Usually I don't do it very often. Um, and so my question, um, and right now actually I have a gallery sending a bunch of my pieces to one of their clients. So if I discount this week and then he goes to my website again and sees that I'm running a sale, then it's like, so should I just reach out to the gallery and say, I'm thinking about discounting them. You can discount these two to that person and then maybe they'll want to buy them more. You could, you can definitely do that. Um, I, I think that's probably a good idea. Um, Otherwise, I was just going to discount the prints and not do any and just do free shipping on originals, um, which is what I often do, because usually I have stuff out at like the Art Association show or this thing. And I like, you know, I can't have too many things. Different. That's a that's another I mean, it depends on what you want to do. Like, that's definitely an easy way to go as well. And then if anybody, you know, you may if somebody contacts you, then you can give them a discount offline. Right. Like, um, mm -hmm. Like if they're interested in the original or, or something like that. Um, I could just offer it to them. Yeah, you can, you can offer it to them without, without publicizing it, right? 
Right. Um, you right. also you also could email your list, you know, and just don't publicize it on the website and just say, call me, you know, or email me if you're interested. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like, or if you know that there's certain collectors on your list or you just blast the whole list, it's up to you. But um, uh, there's a couple of different ways that you can go about that. Okay. That's good. Um, so this sale is following up a giveaway that I ended on Sunday, which had kind of a somber tune, be, t t tone, somber tone, because it was um, like, it was Holy Week related. And so the piece included like a cru crucifixion or whatever. So there's a little bit of me that's like, I feel like I sort of have to have the right, uh, <laughs> The right tone going into and now i'll give you a sale like after giving away this print of jesus um so i don't know if you have any thoughts of that it's okay if you don't but um the i guess should i just do like seven days or because there's like a lot of playbooks out there right now should i mention mothers like there's so many you've got so many playbooks i've like i don't know which one i'm reading right now because i did the giveaway not when you told me to and blah 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean you can't go wrong either way right like i mean we're right up against mother's day i think the mother's day i was looking at the art marketing calendar this morning i think the mother's day begins next week like the mm -hmm. the, the mother's day marketing begins next week if i'm not mistaken um yeah i, I it, you can't go wrong either way. Okay. Yeah. Like, I think, I mean, I think right now, if you're going to do something like, like literally right now. Um, I have to announce the winner tomorrow because that's what I said I was going to do. So. Right. Okay. So you're announcing the winner and then you have the sale that's starting after that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I plan it. I, you're telling me what to do right now. Cause I'm just like, okay, I'll get on the call. I'll ask him what I should do. It's all like, you know, kids in the Lynn kitchen, all that sort of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I mean, I like, I, I think I would, I would probably just blend it together. I would blend some of it together if it were me. I would probably just start blending in like the fact that, you know, like just like this, the pandemic stuff, like that's going on and Mother's Day is coming up and whatever it is, I've got something for you here, right? Like. Okay. And I'm running and I'm running a sale and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Yeah. Also see our earlier point about the fact that, you know, you, it, again, you wrapped up, we all get wrapped up in the thought that everyone is actually seeing what you're doing right now. They're not, they're not. So don't, don't even, you don't need to stress about it, overthink it. Just, just go for it and launch it. Uh, okay. Yeah. It, yeah. You can't do anything wrong. Yeah. All right. That's my, my personality is to think it lots. Um, yeah. yeah. No, just, all of just, just all yeah, okay. just ship it. Okay, good luck. All right, Stephen, you're up next. Stephen, go ahead. Um, yeah, let me, uh, you, am I unmuted? Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. I want to show you guys something, what I got set up, um, and it's part of my strategy. What I'm going to do, uh, let, me, let me adjust this on my iPad. Um, I'm going to uh, give you the camera directed towards the, uh, let me see, where's my photo? Oh, okay. Uh, I'm reversing the camera now, and do you see what I what I'm showing you guys? No, we're not getting any video. Oh, uh, how about this? Do you see me? No, no. Oh, well, here I am. I, I'm out in the, I, I I'm out in my backyard, and I was thinking the way to what to do is to to set up a outdoor gallery mm -hmm. in my backyard. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why I, can't, you, uh, I couldn't. Sh it's too bad I can't show you this. Um, well, how, how about this? Do you want to? Do you want to just see if you can get it fixed, and we'll come back to you in a couple in a couple of rounds? Well, I mean, I, I've I've got my iPad. Wait, let me, wait a second. You know what? Well, just, um, just 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 keep explaining. I mean, I've got a visual in my head. You got a gallery set up in your backyard. I have this big fence that separates our Airbnb guest house from our other backyard. So it's a long linear one, redwood. And so what I've done is I basically pinned up uh, uh, stuff. Uh, oh, can you see me now? Yeah. Okay, let me show you, let me do this real quick and I'll show you exactly and you'll get it right away. So let me reverse this. Oh no, this is me. Do you see this now? No, we lost the video again. 
I guess it won't let me do that. I got an iPad and it won't let me use a camera. But what I'm doing is basically, you could, can you see me now? No. No. Uh, what it's I'm basically, it, sure it looks like so. So what I'm doing is doing all, putting my originals up, pinning, using push pins and pinning them up against the, the, the fence. And I'm just gonna go down and explain something about each one, you know, some of the background, why I painted that, you know, all the stuff that you were talking about before to create a narrative. Um, now, I have my stuff ready uh, and it's gonna schedule for tonight at 12 to start my um, sale. And then um, either corresponding to, to the sale, it's gonna go for a week, either towards the end of the week, I'm gonna announce a giveaway or, uh, you know, or after, right after the sale. Um, but, First of all, what do you think of this idea of the background? Um, does it have to be white wall? I mean, it's going to be a, a, um, a redwood fence, but it's like a perfectly flat surface. It gets in the morning, it gets pure sun, so you get uh, daylight. Um, yeah, are there any concerns about that? Nope. No, not at all. Just just ship it. Ship just it. Ship it. You're, yeah. you're, in the, you're in the early days where you got to just continue executing, continue executing, continue executing and see what happens. But I'm, good uh, idea. yeah, yeah, I think it's a great idea. I mean, I'm excited for you and uh, definitely keep us updated on, on, on how it goes and how it shakes out. Um, but good luck. Uh, I, I love that you're getting creative. Yeah. And remember, Stephen, uh, like when we were talking to Meg at the beginning of the call, if you didn't see it, you might want to see the recording, but she ran the sale and, um, and then she was like, doing you know like an instagram video um like every day on a piece and sending out an email every day on like individual pieces if you don't have a following it may not matter um like as much but that's what you want to do to like really exploit that week of your sale yeah okay next up is sally thanks for the question Stephen. good luck um sally you're up you're unmuted hello thank you for all your wonderful information and I'm finally making time to get into more of the marketing with the website. I'm a full-time artist. I've been doing it for almost 30 years. So my question is, I ran a sale last weekend on my prints and did a really big sale. They're small um, 8 by 10 paper prints with a full thumb core backing. And I went into the detective side and noticed several people had put prints into the cart, but they didn't check out and I didn't have empty carts. My question is, I think it might be the shipping and maybe I need to adjust my shipping prices. Well, did you reach out to them? I couldn't. It wasn't anybody that had a name. Ah, interesting. Yeah. So I couldn't like send them an email and go, hey, why didn't you um, go ahead and check out? So I, mean, I you, know, can, you, sorry, you, can, you can always try. Um, are you on the automated fulfillment? No. You're not. You're doing your own fulfillment? Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, I mean, you could just set your, your shipping prices to zero or whatever you want, or like a small flat fee and just test it out. Well, I have them set up. So I was mainly setting up for selling like fine art. I'm thinking about things and frames, having to buy boxes to ship something, you know, a little bigger, but with these small prints, it would only require like a small box, you know, so if you bought like say 10 of them, it might cost me $15 after I get a box, bubble wrap, pay for the shipping, maybe 20. But I think I was doing the weight, thinking more about selling fine art than just the prints. Can you run a sale or a discount on shipping two different types of shipping discounts at once? Like one for fine art, if you spend over $500, you get free shipping. And if you buy, say, up to 10 of the small prints, you get free shipping? Or can you only set up like one discount? No, I think you, I mean, the technical team would have to help you with that, but I think you can. I think you can um, because they'll just have to enter in a code, but one code will only work if you have a certain, you know, cart value. Okay. Um, and the other one will work for the other one. So you could say, you know, up to like over X dollars, use this code, and then over X dollars, use this code. Or, Actually, if I'm not mistaken, I think you might be able to um, have one that does both. I, I, I honestly don't know. I would have to, if you check in with the technical team, they should be able to give you a way to do that. Question for you though, Watt, um, 
uh, like, it, can you, so do you have your own printer there and you're making your own prints? Yeah, hang on a second, I'll show you real quick. Okay, can you guys see this? Yes. Okay, I wholesale these to a lot of retail stores. I sell them at a lot of festivals when I'm out doing festivals. And I just try to sell them online. That's the main thing I'm marketing this week. I also have a lot of G clay prints here. They're limited editions and I'm gonna put on sale like maybe for Mother's Day, just to say clearing out the studio. Now you guys are sitting at home looking at blank wall space. You wanna beautify your space. I just wanna move some stuff out. We had our um, house get destroyed with Irma and it was mostly my studio. Oh, so gosh. I've just now gotten back into my studio in the last six months and it's working again, so all is good. But I just want to get rid of a bunch of stuff that's been sitting around. And now we have COVID, so we can't get out and do any of our events, obviously. We're all stuck at home. Yeah. So I'm just running this small sale, but it happens a lot when I run the sales on these prints. And I think it's the shipping. I think they'll get in and decide that they're paying too much, but I can't give away shipping on a print that I'm discounting 40%. I mean, you're only paying $14 for the print. So if you buy up to like three of them, the shipping stays at $5.95. Then it goes up to like $10 if you buy five or six of them. Anyway, I think I might lower the cost of the shipping because I have it in according to the weight. Like each print, I have it one pound. So I know it's getting kind of technical, but I think that might be the way to solve it. But I really think they get in and go, I don't want to pay that much for shipping. And that's why the sales aren't going all the way through. But without them telling me, I don't know. And I always put in the emails, please contact me. Call me, email me if you have a problem. I don't know if it's a website thing that's not working for them, but. Well, here's the question though. Here, you know, you know what you should look at? Um, go into the detective for those people, right? So even though it says guest, right? That's what you're seeing, right? You're seeing guest. And, yeah. and, and right, so click on the guest. It's gonna open, it should, I think it does. Does it open the contact for them? No, not if they didn't put in their not if they didn't put in information, I can look, I can just see that they put this in the cart, this in the cart, this in the cart, and then I have- And no it doesn't have a link it. for guest. Um, I, I guess- if, if it does, you can look at, um, actually, you, you, that, you won't need that. You shouldn't need that. Um, what you're looking for is initiate checkout. That like, you know how it, it'll say like add to cart, like all the different events that happened for that person okay. um, in detective. You're looking for the one that says like initiate checkout. That means that they actually reached the checkout page to see a shipping price. Because if they didn't get there, then they didn't actually make it there and they never even saw your shipping. Okay, so go under guest and look, look at the item that got well, go, the go, to, go back to where you were in detective, okay. find those people. And then I think you just hover over the event names right there. And um, like, it'll, it, there's like one of the columns is like event names, I think it's called, or events. Um, and then it, it shows you, you know, what they did. Um, like, it'll show you a summary of like, they added to cart, they put, viewed a product, they initiated checkout. The initiate checkout is the very last step before they actually check out. And so, if you, if you don't see that there, then they never actually got, they never loaded the checkout page because that's what will fire that, con, that conversion event. Does that make sense? Yeah, I've just, I've had it happen a lot when I've run sales and I've been a little frustrated because I can't figure out why they're not going through with buying the product. And to me, I think it might be shipping and I can lower that on the lower weights a little bit. I don't want to go through and change the weight on every single prank. So I have a lot of inventory. Yeah, I wouldn't do it that way either. I would probably just deactivate the shipping methods that you have and just create new ones with a lower price. Just keep your weight as is, just lower the price, yeah. right? And then it, it, like, just think about it as an experiment. Like this is how you want to do these things. Like if you have a theory that, you know, shipping is the problem, then shut off your shipping, right? And just you know, eat the shipping for one sale and just see, right? If it proved, if the experiment is either going to pass or fail one way or the other. And if it did, then you'll go like, okay, I'm, now I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to limp back in. I'm going to, I'm going to put my shipping prices about half of what they were before. Right. Okay. And then see what happens after that, but you'll figure it out one way or the other. Yeah. I've just thought about raising the price on the originals a little bit, maybe to cover shipping. Yeah. So not having a gallery to commission on some of these. I would do that. 
I think that's a good idea. You're, I mean, does a, does a person, does a high net worth individual who's buying an original, um, I mean, what is your price point on your original? They can run from 500 up to 5,000, 6,000 on a big yeah. And so like, do, does that person care about shipping? Not really, so long as it's like, you know, if it's, uh, you know, it, as long as it's not something crazy that just makes you mad when you, you add something like $2,500 to your shopping cart and it's like, wait a minute, now you want like $2.99 for more shipping? What is this, right? But I don't think it matters if it's like, you know, $75 or $100. But I also just think like, why not just price it in for that guy? And when they're ready to buy it, just let it go. I, I really don't think shipping if, like is stopping anybody from buying an original. With prints, it could be if it's, you know, egregiously high for some reason. Well, also, I wouldn't mind, I could set it up free for in the United States, but I don't want to give burn for like $1,000 worth of shipping if, say, a three by four foot painting went to Europe. Like, that would be unbelievably expensive. I would just say U.S. only, maybe the cost of that and i don't want to have to raise the price of the art to cover it might go out of the united states kind of thing yeah i i would just say free shipping for u.s customers you know yeah because you can do that like obviously with your shipping methods you you know you can have it at zero but then um you set up a separate shipping method for international and that only that one is going to appear if the shipping address is in europe so they won't even see the other option Okay, I muted you, Sally, to, to keep things moving. Thank you for the questions. Sally, uh, Marco in the chat is asking for your last name so they can follow up with you about those technical items. If you can uh, put your last name in the chat. Okay, Beck, you're up. Oh, hi. Hey. Hey, Beck. Hi. Um, I'm still hanging out uh, art out in my yard every day. Awesome. <laughs> it's been fun. Um, I have two questions, and they should be quick. Um, I'm revving up to get my originals on my site, but I've historically undersold. And so when I have the sold sticker on my originals past, the price that I want to ask now is it's quite different. So should I change it to zero and leave the sold up or should I just leave the prices up? Because it creates a discrepancy. That's a good question. Is the I sold mean, great? Is it... You know, it's interesting because it's more like the more relevant information isn't the, the, the selling history on it. It's like, what is the real value of it now? You know? Um, I've even thought to really, change price, but that's kind of, is that dishonest? Well, what you could do is if you, if you leave the pricing field blank, it won't appear, okay? And then in the short description, like mimic just just create your own price, like price dot dot, you know, whatever it is. But instead of saying price, you could say market value or just say value. So you're not you're not showing the price. You're actually just showing what you believe the value of the art is right now today, right? Because art is an asset. And so there's a market value for it, you know? I'm sure, I'm sure the person who bought that piece will appreciate the fact that that happened. Mm -hmm. Being dead honest with you, the one person who you think might might not be happy with it, that person's going to be very happy about that. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's the way that you could do it without making it look like, you know, it, it doesn't matter what it's sold for anymore. It's like, here's the value, market value or market price, you know, or you could use some language, something like that to just say, you know, and, and, and I think that's a way to solve the problem. Okay. And then um, I paint quite large 48 by 60. So I, I have a driver that comes to, sh to ship them. And they're not in service right now. They come from, I think, California. And I'm in Boise, so not many services come through here. So does it decrease the value of art if I change it that I sell just the canvas? So I start removing, because I've got the edges so it can be um, restretched onto bars. I like to ship the whole thing, which I've done, but they're large and I, they have to go air freight through UPS. It's, it was a mess through FedEx. It was just horrible. I'd rather have them driven to where they need to go, but they, I can't do that now. So does it decrease the value of art if I'm shipping just the canvas and do I decrease my prices because of that? I don't think so. I mean, I would more give them that option, like just kind of vocalize the option. Like, hey, you either have to wait until yeah. this shipping comes. And like, you could even just put that on your site and you know, in advance or like with the yeah, originals, yeah. like, hey, like I will hold it for you until this shipping coming. I prefer to ship these 
because my work is valuable and this is the most professional way to do it. I normally ship it by truck, you know, but if you really want it, I can also do this. You'll just have to go through the hassle of taking it to a frame shop and getting it stretched or something. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. and, and then and you don't have to charge any different. I would not charge any different pricing. Okay. That's what I was wondering. I just leave okay. it exactly the same. It's their choice. And then you, you mentioned something in the past about you, you said, I caught the tail end of it. I don't even know where you said it, but you said I would be emailing those people every day. So I got on, I'm not big on Instagram. I got on Instagram. I had a bunch of people like my picture and I was just tapping out messages. I didn't copy and paste because I was afraid I'd get cut off. So I typed out about 50 messages and then I didn't add on Facebook. I'm just starting to market. I've been- Sorry, how, did, how did it go on the messages? Did you get good response? In, uh, not really. You know, I don't have much of a presence on Instagram, but I, I have been running an ad on Facebook and I've got- um, I've got 723 likes, 508 shares. And so I've got 215 new people, but that leaves like what, 600 and something people that didn't. So I invite them to like my page, but then I think that gets lost. You know what I mean? Like if they don't see it right away, it gets, so I can't figure out how to reinvite them. Should I just start writing everybody who liked it? I mean, that's like 600 and I mean, what would you do? I got a lot of people liking my page. I got 508 shares. I would start with the ones that left comments. Um, how many comments did you get out of all those likes and impressions and all the rest? Oh, that's a good question. I, I mean, I've gotten a couple hundred comments. Yeah, so I would start with the comments, see how it goes there. That's probably the highest level of intent um, if they actually left a comment. And so I would start there, see what kind of response you get. If it goes well, you can talk about expanding it out. Otherwise, I'd probably just st stop at the comments. And even I responded to everybody that made a comment. You already did on Facebook? It I did. And I went through and I thanked everybody who shared. Nice. And nice. But now I'm at um, six, I'm at 506 people who liked it that didn't, haven't been invited to my page yet. So I've been like hunting through Facebook. Is there a way to re invite? Do I just start doing individual messages to those people who liked my, my art, but didn't yeah, I mean, I, when okay. you send the messages, I always try to get them on your email list, I think. Or, you, you know, if you're on Facebook, you can say, hey, you know, it'd be great if you like my page too. But I probably wouldn't go any further than that. Um, you know, somebody, I was thinking the same thing. If somebody, yeah, if somebody just liked it. I would, I would just move on to the next ad and, you know. To, okay. People, yeah, people just like things all the time. It's not, it's not a strong enough signal for me to all right. to I'm willing to hustle. I just don't, sometimes I'm hustling, but I'm hustling a lot of like things that aren't, you know. I'm trying to figure it out. So that's a constant battle that that is a constant battle that for us too all the time. Um, but yeah, I think you exhausted it by like, if you replied to the comments and Pat, didn't, didn't, you, didn't you say um, hmm. you like to, uh, if somebody drops a comment, you want to DM them actually though, right? And yeah. then invite them to like subscribe or, or to follow you or something. Yeah, I mean, it's harder on, on Facebook. It's a little bit different because like, you got to send them a message on messenger and can you get away with that? Does it, does it always go through? I don't know. Um, I haven't really done the technique the same way on Facebook that I've done it on Instagram. Instagram is just so easy. It's so quick, which is not to say it wouldn't work great on Facebook. It's just not something that, that I can speak to because I haven't done it yet. But I, generally speaking, like oh, starting conversations is, is the win, right? So you want to start as many conversations as you can, but you want to be starting them with the wrong, the right people and not the wrong people. So if somebody leaves a really, really good comment, would I try to contact them on Messenger? I would, but I'd say, I'm going to do this 100 times and let's see what response I get out of 100 times. And if it doesn't go that well, I just move on. That's what I would do. I muted you back. Sorry. Got to keep moving. Got to keep, got to keep going. <laughs> um, okay. On to next. Susan, Susan Michael, haven't, haven't spoke to you in years. How you doing? Patrick, how are you? Good. Am I there? Yeah, yeah, we've got it before. That's pretty cool. Hey, you guys are are rocking this. This is amazing. I've been listening to a lot, a lot of them, but this is the first one I've actually gone on. And uh, Nick, uh, Nick, I was a very uh, past customer of uh, a Breathing Color for years and years and years. I've still I still use their stuff all the time. So that was a really cool connection. Awesome. Glad to hear it. So, yeah, um, I've got a couple of questions. Before I forget, let me say this really quick. Pat knows that I was past president of Professional Photographers of America. And for you guys who are not members, they have opened up their educational vault for free. So you can go and, um, and sign up and you're not going to be a member. It's a free thing. And you can access any of their Photoshop or Lightroom compositing. There's thousands and thousands of videos out there. So if anybody's interested in that, I uh, just thought I'd throw that out. So a couple of questions. 
questions, um, mainly about the influencer marketing, because I'm really excited about that, but I'm missing some pieces of the puzzle. Is it okay to like rehash that again and, um, and see if I can grasp this? So I've listened to everything I can back that you've done, um, but um, you're asking them for a link back or then I saw that you were saying that you could do like a Facebook, I mean, an Instagram live with them. Um, the ultimate goal, of course, I'm assuming, being for them to go sign up on your website um, for the giveaway. Mm -hmm. so, or, or better um, still purchase, but yeah. Can you kind of rehash that just a little bit? Because I'm a little confused about whether you want them to do the Facebook live, whether, how, whether they're just gonna post, simply post a link or what we would expect of them and, and then the end result for you, because clearly if we don't get a sign up, what difference does it make? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're gonna run like an in-depth workshop specifically on this topic. I think on Friday, I'm gonna do it. Awesome. So, yeah, where I wanna go through the whole thing from start to finish, every single tactical piece, uh, what the negotiation looks like, you know, what's a win, what's, what's a double win, like what's the trifecta of all of it. So I'd probably say if you could wait. wait, wait I can wait. Okay, good. And yeah. one other thought, like for example, um, every every online meeting is every meeting has become online. I sat in a really expensive mastermind two weeks ago with 50 mm -hmm. people, all of whom could have afforded art out the wazoo. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if anybody's thought about um, doing a giveaway in something like that. I mean, it's the same kind of thing, but it's a little bit out of the box. So we'll just throw that out there for a thought process. I mean, I, it would have been great on one of their little Zoom breaks to have said, oh, and we're going to give away this piece of art because I was the only artist in the group. Oh, that and that would have been cool. But, you know, so I'm going to do another one next week. And I thought maybe I would, but these people I don't know as well, maybe I would contact them and see if during one of their breaks, they wanted to give away a piece of art to, I don't know how many thousands of people might be on this thing. That would be awesome. That's yeah, the other one was more expensive and, and it was qualified clients, but it were only 50 people in there. But still, all of these people paid like upwards of 20 grand to be in this mastermind. Ooh, that's I, good. I love it. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. Okay, this is a, t a technical thing that has driven me completely freaking crazy. So my idea was that I would go and do Facebook Lives since we all don't like to do them really. I mean, I think everybody hates to do them. It's just hard and, you know, you can't control what's going on and you're just putting yourself right out there. But I did do some. And the idea was that I would go and start, you know, grabbing a flower and telling people where I got weren't it. Were you a musician on stage putting yourself oh, yeah. out there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, putting myself out there is not that hard. It's just that technically getting it all together and figuring it all out, and and you know, I mean, it's still a little, it's still a little more difficult. You can't exactly practice this crap. You just put it out there and go for it. Yeah, so no, anyway, um, um, I need to do it horizontally because if I'm in the studio and I'm photographing these flowers, they need to see it horizontally. Um, and so I know you do it horizontally. I know to put the camera up there. I'm a photographer. I mean, geez, but. Then when I go and post it in Facebook, it always goes, it goes vertical and it looks stupid. And I've asked 400 people, I've read everything I can read and I still can't figure out how to do it. Am I missing something? Anybody so you're, know? So, so you're, explain that to me again, because I, I want to- Okay, I put the camera up horizontal on yep. a little tripod yep. and I do the whole thing horizontal and I start in horizontal. Mm -hmm. As far as I know, all the camera settings are correct according mm -hmm. to everything I've read. It films it in horizontal but then when I post it to Facebook, it goes vertical and it looks stupid. Now, if they turn their phone, they can watch it horizontal. But is it, it just on your is stupid. it on your Facebook page now? Yes. That's really weird. Okay. I I'll know look. I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't I don't know how to fix it or if it's even fixable. I mean, we basically gave up on that and just decided to just go portrait. Well, and then the, yeah, the other question is, can you just go square? And, and like eliminate it and then you got it and you can post it anywhere you want to. And that yeah. might be the answer, but I don't even know if you can do that. I you think know. that is more, I think that is more of the answer just because like with the, with the uh, portrait, like you can upload like to IGTV, to Instagram yeah, TV. Right. If you do it horizontal, then you're kind of cutting off your nose to spite your face. But can't, I don't know that you can do a Facebook live square and then- well, no. You know, really what I hate is it looks stupid on my feed. Willie looks stupid for a photographer. And I know you can do it because I've seen other people do it. But I haven't figured it out yet. Yeah, I'll, I'll look. Let me look on your page and see what's going on. And I'll, and I'll get to the bottom of that. And it's the one with the orange flower because it's confusing. You know, it's not my personal page with the pink flower. It's the orange flower. That's the business. What, what, kind, of, what kind of phone are you, are you using? Michael, 
iPhone. An Not iPhone, like ever. latest, latest ones. Cause I, I know yeah, that, but it's, yeah, I think I, I think I know what the problem is. I, I don't know how to solve it, but it has to do with the metadata, right? Like they're like the metadata, um, will flip the orientation and like, Facebook is probably not very good at parsing whatever that is. And so it doesn't realize that you wanted to do what you wanted to do and it's flipping it for you, which is crazy, right? All this talk about artificial intelligence That's and they can't figure it. It's just amazing. Yeah. It's and if, you know, if I'm photographing a flower in the studio, you can't, if I flip it vertical in it, you can't see it. It's stupid. It doesn't work. Yeah. You're seeing right. all this crap I don't want them to see and not what I want them to see. So anyway, if we can I'll figure look, it, if yeah, anybody I'll, has an idea, that'd be great. I'll look and then join the thing on Friday. Then as a final, some people were asking, what's what's the website, um, your your association website? You mean art storefronts? No, no, no. The, the oh, PPA. oh, PPA, Professional Photographers of America, PPA.com. PPA.com. By the way, um, Susan, Kimberly, Kimberly Camerata said the same thing happened to her, and she solved it by by using her computer camera. So that might be something that works for you. Yeah, I just use the use the Mac laptop camera. Um, and That's then, what I'm using right now. I'm using a MacBook Pro camera. So come, come, and come to that thing on Friday, um, Susan, I'll, and I'll and I'll demystify the other thing completely for you. Okay, Carolyn, you missed raising your hand. I'm going to get you next. Uh, you're we up. Also have uh, Susan. We also have a playbook for. I don't know if you saw the playbook. Let's put the playbook in the show notes for this thing that Pat's doing on Friday. It's just in written format, but we're going to go through all of. He's going to go through all of it. But it is in written format right now in the in the marketing resource vault. So let's get a link yeah. uh, down there in the in the chat and in the show notes. And there'll be a replay also. And then you know, someone was asking what time. We've decided that we're just sticking to one time because it's too complicated with the times. We're 11 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern. That's that's what we're doing. So. And it'll be recorded and it'll be posted to that to that same playbook so that there's a video walkthrough for the whole thing. Yep. Just in uh, case you miss it. Okay, Caroline, you're up, go. Hi, thanks, Pat, uh, really appreciate it. Uh, I've been with you a few weeks. I'm not getting much traction. Would like for you to take a look at my website and the ad I posted uh, this morning as well. I posted one previously and it bombed, but I chose the demographics and someone suggested I go back and do your kitchen sink ad, which I did. So that's the ad I'm doing now. If I could just uh, paste that in right now, you can see my ad, and then um, I can type in the, my website too. What is your last name too? It's Johnson. Johnson, okay. You want to do the screen share, Nick? Well, I'm gonna. I'm looking up her account first. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you might want to take a look at my stats. I'm not getting. Yeah, anything. that's what I'm gonna do. So, because I'm a gallery, you know, it's 10 people that I'm working for. I don't know if that's an issue. Um, it's hard. You know, I keep posting things to post Facebook and uh, I do different posts and videos. I know I haven't done enough, but I got to keep working at it. Yeah, you do. I mean, and, and also too, it, take, it takes time, especially when you're just getting spun up. Like, you know, the tendency, the tendency is like, I'm, you know, I'm a couple of weeks in and I'm, and, and I'm not really seeing the results. And I'm, I'm looking at your, your ad now and it says EAU gallery, right? Um, mm -hmm. And it's time to switch yes, up. Yes. Oh, gallery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at it. Uh, practically speaking, I think the ad looks okay. I mean, it feels a little bit like a stock image, um, but that's not the end of the world. The, the piece behind looks good. I would say, you know, w what size is your email list so far? Um, my email list is about 900, mm -hmm. but I used all of the audiences that you suggested. Okay. We have about 900 Facebook followers as well. Yeah, you have even more than that. You have a thousand, um, it looks like. In the last uh, 30 days, Pat, mm -hmm. 371 direct visits, 70 from Facebook, or actually more like, uh, like 120 from Facebook, mm -hmm. um, 43 organic. I could share the conversion doctor. Are any of them, are any of them converting into contacts? Uh, yep. So here we are. Can you see it? Yep, I got you. Okay. So 6% on the direct, I'd like to see that higher. Um, on, the, on the Facebook right here, um, and then there's a, didn't I see another one? Yeah, right here. 
Um, well, she's got 0% on this one and then 4.76. That's just a sign. The fact, if that's under 5%, that's just a sign that your targeting isn't as tight. Um, but then again, it's not a lot of visits. It's only a hundred and what is that? A, a 112. Um, so we're not playing with a lot of numbers here. One of the problems I have with Facebook is that it's all local artists because we do a lot of shows and exhibits. So those are our people. Those are not buyers. So it's not a good audience. Yeah. Well, interestingly though, it's, you got, you, you got a 2.3% on the add to cart. That's probably only what one person or no, two people here. Yeah. So, I would guess. Yeah. And then the only other person in the last 30 days that's added anything to the cart, it was a direct visitor. So, um, so let's take a look at all this. Like, this is not good right here. This is a problem. This 15% product buying page. So you want to look at this like a funnel, right? So they're, they're not making it to your product buying page, which means they're landing on your website and they're looking at like your gallery of images or whatever. And mm -hmm. no one's clicking on or a very small percentage is actually clicking to go through to see that image bigger and to see all the pricing and actually start shopping with it. So I want to take a look at your site real quick and just see if uh, anything stands out. We have a lot of talented artists. So a lot of them are award-winning artists. So I think their work is pretty good. The hardest thing is with the targeting, right? Like for an artist, for an individual artist or photographer, you know, they can target people who like that specific subject matter. I still think the gallery has to do a similar thing. Um, I'm not sure why that's not loading. I may or may not be able to load this because we're streaming right now. Um, and go directly to my site. I'm trying to, but it's my internet is having problems because of this. Uh, the streaming takes a lot of internet bandwidth. Right. So, but um, I don't know. I don't know if that anything there was necessary. Yeah. <clears throat> Go ahead. I was really hoping that you could take a look at my website to see if there may be problems there. That I yeah, need. can't unfortunately just can't do it today. Um, yeah, I'll 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 take a note and we'll look at it and we'll get back to you. Okay. Uh, that's my ad. It's okay. It's not spectacular, but. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, I think, again, like you're just getting started digitally speaking, you know, you've, you've been at for a, a short clip of time and early on, there's like a tendency to want to overanalyze everything and say, oh, what's working here? What's not working here? Is something I'm doing wrong? Is it the website? And the, the point is, you just don't have enough data. You don't know yet. You don't know what you don't know. So early on, you just want to just stay at the marketing for a good clip of time, build up a good clip of traffic. And then, you know, if nothing sells, nothing moves, you're not getting contacted, then you realize you have some other issues. So that's well, I want, I also, I also want to ask though, like, have you ran a sale? Um, yes. And of course we did the giveaway. Yeah. And we've done promotions for discounts on gift cards and I did promotions for prints. You know, I haven't gotten any sales. Yeah. I noticed on your stats that like, uh, in the last 30 days from your, from your, your emails, um, there's only 21 people who actually visited the site from an email that you sent. Yeah. So Not it's doing gotta something, right? Right. it's, it's got to start there, right? Like, uh, and you said you have 900 people. Facebook. Yeah. And 900 email subscribers. Yeah. And how many, how many emails have you sent out in the last 30 days? Oh, in the last 30 days, Roughly. probably only four or five. Um, I still, I mean, so if you ran the giveaway and, and, or, and then you, uh, sorry, and you ran like a sale and only, you know, 21 people out of all of that have clicked and come back to the site, right. something's wrong there. Like not a good list, probably. What's that? Not a good list. It could be not a good list. It could be like, are they getting the emails? Like, is, or is the sub, are the subject lines good enough? Is the content? like worth clicking in, like they, you know, they, they may not be reacting to it. If you're following and using like our templates, I would say that is not the problem. I have uh, used your templates uh, at least three times. Yeah. So who are these people? 
Well, as I say, they're mostly artists. I mean, there are a few buyers in there, I believe, uh, a few people who are not, you know, qualified prospects. The, the list is just not very good. Yeah. Okay. So start. Yeah. So the name of the game for you is like, like this. It's very similar to people that we see um, starting out, um, and you know, they've got they've got like a friends and family list, but it's not really. There might be 250 people on it, but they're not really buyers. And so it's like right. who's really like a, a lead on that. And oftentimes people tell me they're like, I don't know, maybe less than 10. And I'm like, well, that's the reality of your list, right? And so your entire focus needs to be on filling up the sales funnel, right? Um, and on that, uh, that is the workshop that Pat is doing on Friday. Um, that's the one that I want you to go to for sure. Because okay. we have and we we have this um we have this awesome resource uh, that, that we've been building on uh, for the last couple of months. And it's called like the, you know, the, um, like how to generate leads. And it's like an idea list of all these different ways that art storefronts members have generated leads and, you know, gotten sales and things that have worked for them. So let's get that in the show notes here for Carol Ann. And, uh, um, but given the pandemic situation and since everybody's at home, there's like, there's a whole like robust section of offline tactics. Can't do those right now. And so for the online, we're really pushing everybody to do this specific tactic, which is these uh, Facebook groups and these Instagram um, content curator accounts. And, and that's the workshop that Pat's doing on Friday. So it's in, the, it's in our show notes right now. So you can start looking at it if you want to, because it's in written format. Um, but because it's so important, we're gonna go through it in detail on Friday so that you guys can ask questions and, you know, um, every, and we can just make sure that everybody's doing it. Yeah. And, and again, keep the perspective too. You're, you're super new to this. So it is going to take you some time to get things ramped it's up early on. It, yeah. Unless you have a, unless you have a good size list and they're, and they're really, they're leads that the gallery has been like, you know, acquiring for a while, you know, then yeah, you're, you're totally starting from scratch. I, I hate it. it like it hurts me to say it, but it is just the truth. And I think it's empowering like for, for you guys, like, and for the owners of the business, like when you, when you know that that's just the case and you're just like, okay, well, it's time to just move on. And I got We got to start doing some marketing and generating some leads, you know, get some lines in the water. And that's what that tactic is designed to do. So that way you can like, you can start leveraging the internet and social media to try to get a bunch of attention coming back to, to the site and start building a list from there. Yep. And stay at it. Stay at it. Um, but good luck, and, and we'll see you Friday for that for that workshop, and I, and I think that'll help a bunch. Uh, James, you're up, and then we're going to go to Melissa, then we're going to go to Mark. So, James, go ahead. Hey, Patrick. Hey, Nick. What's up? Hey, hey James. All right. It's good to see you guys again. I've uh, just done my first uh, giveaway, and I've gotten some bounces back, and I've gotten some things. i got about 70 new names, but I was having a problem with uh, an oops message that would appear when uh, customers would come and try to access my uh, standalone giveaway page. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering about that. And the second thing is I want to send these people uh, that open or, or didn't open the uh, first email, my website. So I need to know how to go to MailChimp or where I need to go in order to do that because I'm not really sure about how to do that. Okay. And you're talking about just sending to the unopens. Is that, is that what you were asking? Right, right. To send it to the unopens that didn't open it uh, originally. Got it. Okay. We, can someone in tech reach out and, and, and teach him? Uh, we'll walk you through this. It's, it's a pretty easy process. Once you've done it once, you kind of have the measure of it. And I can't remember if MailChimp, does, Taylor, does MailChimp automate that? Um, I think it does automate it if you want it to, it's, okay. it'll, it'll be easy. Um, what was, what was the oops though that you started with? Uh, I don't know. I don't really understand what was going on, but I had customers that were getting back with me on Facebook, like maybe 20 of them that said, I'm, I can't do this. I'm getting an oops message. And uh, I don't know whether I captured those, uh, emails or not. So I'm, I'm like, I tried to, I put it in like 70 of them myself by hand mm -hmm. that I did see in my emails that might not have gotten 
uh, anywhere except dumped in the email, uh, uh, my email address. So I put them in by hand. But other than that, I'm like, I can't keep doing that because it takes so much time. No, yeah, nor, nor should you have to do that. I get it. So the oops is between your art storefronts and MailChimp, I'm guessing, and pushing the email. Right. right. Okay, right. So we'll have, we'll have one of the tech people that are on this. Yeah, we'll have one of the tech people that are on this call reach out and, and, and get to the bottom of both of those. And then Taylor tells me it is manual to send to people that didn't open, but that it's really easy to do. So I think you want to learn that. Um, you'll get it going. Did you, as far as the contest goes, that's a that's a good first um, first result. Good, you know, seventy emails in your first one is great. And just so you know, Marco is going to reach out to you, um, James. Okay. Uh, awesome. Did you did you sell anything yet, or is the the sale not over? Not, not yet, not yet. I haven't sold anything yet. I'm in contact and doing that one on one combat with a couple of customers, but I haven't sold anything yet. Okay. Well, stay at it. Stay at it. You're 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 asking the right questions. You're working on your marketing. You're not asking website questions. That makes me happy. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Thanks, right. man. Appreciate it. it. And Mark, I'll reach out. Okay. Um. All right, Melissa, you're up next. Go ahead, Melissa. Hey guys, how's it going? Good. How you doing? Doing well, thanks. Um. So, I am. I'm running the Zoom sale right now. Mm -hmm. Um. And I'm doing 25% off and I've, I've boosted a couple of ads, Instagram and Facebook, and that's all well and good. Um, getting um, no sales yet, but I'm very hopeful. Um, but my question is with the Mother's Day sale starting next week, mm -hmm. um, do, do I continue my sale and run, run like a separate Mother's Day sale on the side for the same amount with just a separate code? Probably, What's the best I, way to do that? I would probably wait until the first one ends and then literally email them the next day and just say, you know what, now that Mother's Day is on, I figured I would just extend it and then just extend it right through. That's probably what Okay, and just use the same code and- Yeah, totally. Use the same code. Okay. Like, you know, make sure it ends, always let it end, right? Right. And then, and then just push right into the same one um you know <laughs> the zoom background sale has now become zoom plus mother's day or my right. Mo or mother's zoom background either <laughs> way we're still going um yeah that's that's what i would do okay cool uh, thank you yeah and good luck and you know i will I'm, I'm really hoping to get some good results on these zoom sales but again it's 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 like anything else so the, the best that we can do right now is just put things in the water that's right it. right and I'm, I'm still waiting on my Instagram boost is doing way better than the Facebook. Um, I've had like almost 15,000 people have seen it, but unfortunately I'm not getting likes or followers or clicks to the website. I've gotten 19 clicks to the website, but nobody has signed up yet. So um, I'm still pretty new. I'm, I'm, I've been live for about a year, a little over a year. Um, and just having a chance to really dive back into the marketing. Right. Um, and so I, I'm kind of a newbie there. Sure. Um, and, and, it, and again, like the, the perspective piece, like it takes time. The first right. year sucks. First year totally sucks. Even the first, second year kind of sucks sometimes because it just takes a while to get the momentum and to get the learning and to get your feet wet with everything. But there's no shortcut to it, right? Like there's, right. there's no shortcut to it. You have to put in that work and you have to do it. And, you know, as I was ranting this week, it's like, you know, everyone always uses the oak tree analogy and it's like, this thing happened, okay, this COVID-19, absolute black swan event for anyone that's selling art, right? Not just if you were overly reliant on off, offline uh, modes of selling, right? Offline revenue sources. But even like everyone is starting to see like, one, you guys have a huge leg up on everyone because your website's up. But two, if you didn't have a marketing machine spun up before this thing, it's pretty hard to spin up a marketing machine right now. The good news is you've already started, you're already going. That gives you a huge leg up on everyone else out there. And, and let me tell you, it's much harder for them to, you know, if, if this thing hit and you had no website and you had two fans on Instagram and you didn't even start the Facebook page, you're in a bad spot. You're in a bad spot. You can call your pants down. So for everyone else, like keep the perspective of the fact that the next 12 to 24 months is going to still be dominated by online. There is still so much time in the next 12 to 24 months to get a handle on your marketing, to start doing it consistently, to start winning, to fall flat on your face lots of times on sales, especially early on. But it's where you're gonna be at the end of that and how you're setting yourself up to truly take advantage of these next 12 to 24 months because social distancing is gonna be a thing, right? Like people are not gonna keep going out until there's a vaccine for this thing. People are just gun shy in general. And so 
online is the way forward for the foreseeable future. And, you know, you just have to have the perspective of how long it takes. And even if, you know, even if you're an established artist or an established uh, gallery in Mary's case, like, I know it hurts. It, it's like, oh, it's a gut punch. But I think that's just the reality of we're in. So hopefully there was some encouragement there for you. But yeah, stay encouraged. Great. Thank you so much. Okay, Mark, go ahead. You're up. Hey, hello, guys. Um, good to be online here. I just wanted to mix up your backgrounds, too. I love it. Yeah, I was kind of an experiment. I put that together the other day and, you know, I probably good. need to move it over to the side or something. But It looks good. Um, yeah, it worked pretty good. You know, it's pretty easy to do, but you just have to know how to do Photoshop stuff. Yeah, that's so, it. I am uh, really appreciative of listening to Meg, you know, her comments and leadership and trying to market things is really cool but yeah don't don't just listen to her either follow her instagram and yeah i've been following her since her. about i've been following her since about the time i started working with you guys yeah so yeah it's been pretty influential but what you guys are doing now is even more so but i had a couple of quick questions here um you know i'm kind of one of those persons that overthinks a lot of things but i have a question about sort of a ratio of photographers and digital artists as opposed to ratios of people that are painters on your platform i'm just curious about that it's uh, I'm, I'm, I, I have absolutely no idea what the answer is either um my guess is is probably 65 um or maybe 60 40 or or somewhere in there um photographer okay. artists versus photographers i would say Early on when it launched, early on when it launched, it was like all in photographers. And then like the pendulum just kind of swung, not by any design on our part, kind of just swung painter a little bit. And now it tends to swing back uh, photographer a little bit. But I don't think, I don't think the differences in how you go about marketing yourself or how you go about um, getting the word out there and generating sales is all that different between the two. That would be my perspective. Okay. Well, the only reason why I asked was it has to do with this idea of the sense of urgency. You know, with photographers, it's a little bit different mm -hmm. than it is with painters. But how so? I just wanted to ask that question to get a sense of, you know, what might be happening. But the I had too was uh, something I have on my website that is has to do with the, uh, this whole thing about the idea of guaranteeing someone that they'll be satisfied with their purchase. Mm -hmm. I honestly think that, you know, I try to be pretty honest and upfront about some of the policies I have on my website. Mm -hmm. And I maybe I'm scaring some people away with that. Mm -hmm. I don't really want to swallow that loss. But I'm thinking about trying to do a test just to see where I guarantee that people will be happy with their purchase and kind of get a feel for how many people actually try to ship something back to me because they're not happy with it. So far, I haven't had a problem with it, but I personally think it's deterring people from going in and finishing up their shopping cart or I even I, I going there. Seriously, seriously doubt it. I seriously, I seriously doubt it. Um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go worried or stressing about that one in the slightest. When you're, you're, you're here, here's like the difficult thing too early on is like you likely don't have enough traffic to ever find out if the change that you made is statistically significant or not right or if it's just on a whim or whatever else so i would spend no time worrying about it unless you feel like you know normally what happens if you have something like that on your website is you'll get an email and then some time will go by and you get an email again and then some time go by you get an email again and you're like okay wait a minute this seems to be a trend maybe this is a thing right but early on like stressing about that and thinking that it's something on your website that's that's preventing you it's, it's not, and it's not the highest leverage place to be spending your time. Like you just want to keep driving okay. more qualified traffic to the best of your ability as you can to the site and, and not stress about the small stuff that, you know, maybe has a chance to make an impact, but in the grand scheme of things, we would have seen it if it would, uh, we would have been able to tell you. If you, if you, and Mark, if you really want to make yourself feel better about it, like you can just remove everything. You know what I mean? Like, it, you're, you're not going to do any damage to your business. If you want to remove all that stuff for a month or two, free shipping, like the whole thing. I mean, you can get every bit of friction out of the way, you know, it's, it, it's, it's up to you. And then you can, and then you can like kind of inch it back in. Right. Sure. So, yeah, I get it. 
you can do it. You, you know, I, I think Patrick is correct, but sometimes, you know, whatever we say is, is, you know, you, you're still going to have that like bug in the back of your mind. Like, is that yeah, probably and sometimes it's good to just remove them all and just be, you know, like just remove it all and then see where you're at. And I think you'll see like, you know, that it, 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 it probably wasn't the, the difference maker, you know? Yeah. I think the one I have in my shopping cart is there's a place that you need to check that you read my policies and oh. stuff. And uh, that's part of the thing that I'm concerned about, you know? Yeah. Just remove it. I would get rid of yeah. it. Get rid of it. Yeah, just, just remove it. Yeah. You'll feel better about it. I would just remove it. There's no, you can't, you can't harm yourself. Like for anybody, for anybody that's listening, since it's come up a few times in some different ways, like we had somebody earlier that was talking about, um, it was Sally. She was talking about uh, um, how she was worried about her shipping and she just didn't know whether yeah. it was shipping. And we were kind of, we were kind of looking into that. And it's like, you like, just, just go free shipping for one week, you know, that you're running a sale. Like if the last sale didn't work, why not? And you, and you're thinking that it might be shipping, run your next sale with free shipping, see what happens, you know? Yeah. I have and enough. So like with anything like that, with any friction point that you think you might have, just remove it and see what happens. Just save the text. You can implement it later if you want, or you can put it somewhere less discreet, you know? Yeah. But at the end of the day, if somebody's really that unhappy, you know, like with the, with what you got them, that's not a good situation, you know, either way, yeah. you probably want to give them a refund or, yeah, after, a commercial refund yeah. or something. after owning a retail gallery for years and selling my own work through that, it was really important to me that I made sure everybody was happy, you know? So anyway, that was my questions. Yeah. And you appreciate, can, like, appreciate you guys. You, okay. you, you could very easily have yourself like a, you know, a little restocking fee. You know what I mean? That's like very discreet somewhere else where it's like, it at least covers your cost of the print and your time if somebody really wants to do it. And, you know, it's, it's obviously, it should be like within the first like two weeks or 30 days of them receiving the item. Cause it's like, inspect the item, make sure it's all good. And we go from there, you know, but, but uh, that's it. Otherwise like, yeah remove any friction that you think is there if you really want to do it and, and then go for it. Yep. And get, and get back to marketing. <laughs> um, okay. Kira, you're up. Your last question. Go. Awesome. So um, I've seen a couple of people uh, talk about having people like and follow you on Facebook for extra points in a giveaway. Yes. And I'm about to launch my new website giveaway. And I was just wondering how would I do that so that I can get more likes and follows? Cause I only have like 15. So if I could have people encouraged to do that, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. So we should have it all in the documentation, but the long and the short of it is um, see who likes your Facebook page. And if you can match it up to the email, they get the extra points. But we have language that says specifically like for two entries into the contest, uh, go ahead and like my Facebook page and like me on Instagram. Here, here it is. And here it is. It's a little bit less straightforward. I guess it's pretty straightforward on both, but people have to use their real names on Facebook. So the most part it's in there. I've seen it. I think it might be in the advanced section on one okay. of those days, but if you, yeah. So, but, it, but that's what it is. That's, that's the key, right? Is like uh, you give them extra entries and, and cool stuff if they share it and tag friends and things like that. Neat. That was my only question. <laughs> and good luck. You, you know how you build Facebook fans? How? One fan at a time. <laughs> one fan at a time. <laughs> Same with Instagram. <laughs> takes time. <laughs> takes some perspective. But my rant earlier holds true. Like, you know, recession, just getting started great time to launch because you're going to grind so hard right now. And then all of a sudden you're going to wake up two and a half years later, however long it takes. And you're like, man, I really have the hang of this. I'm moving, I'm rolling, um, which is great. So, all right. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and lower your hand mute. Okay. Marie, you're the last one. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to unmute you now. Go ahead, Marie. Okay. I just had, am I unmuted? Yeah. 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 Okay. Thanks you guys for hanging in there. Um, Let's see, I just had one quick thing to share with everybody that um, our TV news station has been really trying hard to help local small businesses. So I just wanted to throw that out there to pay attention to your local news station's website because ours, had they offered for free for you 
for all small businesses to have their website listed on their page. So like they're trying to encourage people to support small business right now. So I went through and did it and they gave, let me put my logo, any sales that I'm doing. I put my Zoom sale on there and links to my website and all that for free. So that was a really easy thing to do. It took me half an hour or less to get it set up. Um, cool. And then cool. my, my other question, my actual question was, okay, so for Instagram, I've been doing some of the, you know, influencer stuff, but one other thing that I've had some success with, and I'm wondering if you, what your opinion is on it is rat like, okay, I'll find somebody who has a decent following and then I'll look at their posts and pick one that I like, and then look at the people who have liked the post. And then I will go through that list. And if those people, like I do dog portraits, right? So if it's a dog related post and I notice their profile picture has a picture of their dog for their profile picture, I know they're obsessed with their dog. So I will go and follow as many as I can from the people that liked that curator's post. And I'm finding that I'm getting much more quick response and growing my audience that way. Is that something you think is worthwhile to do? Yeah, I mean, if it's working, absolutely. You know, if you're if you're getting follows and you're getting people out on your email list out of the out of the deal, then then stay Nothing out. Nothing with the email list yet, but my, I mean, I just spent like maybe a half an hour doing it one day, and I got like maybe ten or fifteen new followers on my Instagram out of it. So. If I could just have my son do all the work, <laughs> right, right. hire them up to do it. But Indentured servitude. We are we are big believers in that around here. Is that so? Is that gonna like? Is that considered being spammy? Doing that, like, if... <laughs> no, not necessarily. Not necessarily. I mean, you know, the ultimate measure is whether or not they follow you. If it was super spammy, you wouldn't be getting anyone following you. That's not the question you need to ask yourself. The question is, is it the best use of your time? And is it, you know, going to provide the most ROI? And that's, that's, that's when you have to answer in comparison, contrast to, to the other stuff you're doing, right? But, but you could pay a virtual assistant for like three to $4 an hour to, if it's teachable for your son to do, you could definitely have a virtual assistant do it. And then, you know, you calculate the cost of that. That might be interesting. Yeah. Cause well, I have a 14 year old son too, so I could easily have him do it. It's just, I don't want to sit around for hours doing it myself because I have a lot of other things I'm supposed to be doing. So that's right. Sounds like something my dad would have like punished me with when I was a kid, like <laughs> that type of a task. Yeah. There's plenty of those. Yeah. All right. Well, and then lastly, my question is like for, okay. So for the influencer people, um, if I want to, ask them to, you know, do the link back and for a giveaway thing mm -hmm. with the dog portraits. Like, I don't, I mean, I guess I have some generic dog portraits that are just like a white on black and outline of each breed. Would that be something worth giving away? Or I don't want to end up getting sucked into doing a bunch of portraits for people for free is what I'm worried about like I don't right does it have to be super valuable no not necessarily well I mean you know it's 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 the age-old question right like when you give away an iPad versus you give away a yellow uh letter letter lined legal pad which is going to get you more entrance right it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to get you more sales but Look, I would say, you know, you have to experiment. We have the big workshop coming up on Friday. I wouldn't do anything until then. I'm going to, I'm going to walk everybody through and answer all of these questions once and for all and really like show the in-depth way that, that I would approach us. And I think the best way to approach it is. And then, you know, from there, you, you have to, you have to get into a situation where, you know, you're, you're, you're at least trying these things to get some feedback. Like you might have to give away a couple of things and to, to learn. And that's, that's sort of how it goes, but come to the, come to the thing on Friday and you know or watch the replay over the course of the weekend and i think it'll i think it'll clear a ton of stuff up for you that's what i think it's gonna be a great one everybody should be should either go to that or at least watch it and know that it's happening
because it's the number one tactic that we're telling everybody to do. And I think it's going to be, it's going to be a really good workshop. There'll, there'll be a lot of detail in there. Um, yeah, that's going to be a good one. You're hyping it up. Okay, Nick, we leave it there. Yeah. Guys, thank you. All of you. Thanks, um, guys. We'll, we'll see you soon on the next one. Bye-bye.